Bro, I had a dream that they were taking away Marks of Grace in September. <laughs> it's a terrible <clears throat> dream. Like, I had a dream that people were like, yeah, like, like Marks of Grace don't matter anymore. I'm like, yeah, because I've had Graceful for like four years. Like, no, 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 they're discontinuing them in September. Like, why the f*** are they discontinuing Marks of Grace? I'm like, how are we going to get Amylase? And people are like, I don't know. I'm like, is the price of stamina potions going to like skyrocket? skyrocket up because i got a couple hundred that i'll I'll turn into stamina to get 99 herb lore <laughs> if they're discontinuing like marks of grace soon uh and people the response was just like i don't know who knows so i had a dream where i was debating going from like 92 to 99 herb lore just with stamina pots um so i could make absolute bank <laughs> Welcome back to XP Waste, where if you think the Inferno is harder than the Hollow Sepulcher, you clearly don't have 92 agility. Hi, I'm struggling. <laughs> and I'm Michael. <laughs> if this is your first time tuning into XP Waste, uh, we are an old school RuneScape podcast. We'll dive into everything related to RuneScape and probably everything not related to RuneScape. It's kind of just how it is. It turns out that, like, I would say. 86% of the show is RuneScape related, and then the other 14% kind of just make it up as we go. So if that interests you, you've chosen the right place to uh, you know, spend your time. If you're not new around here, Oxy is struggling, as he said, and uh, I, I feel like I feel just the tiny, tiniest bit justified because whenever I was going for 99 agility, all I heard from Oxy was like, Michael. Why are you doing arty laps? It's so slow. Just do the sepulcher. And now he understands why I didn't do sepulcher. Because if he's struggling, God only knows how I would have fared. Because your clicks are better than mine. I will just say that, like, you click better in a clicky game. And if you're struggling, I, I, there, I, I don't have a chance. I literally don't stand a chance. I don't know if that's entirely true. So it's to not get into true, what I've been, that's a little, to get in, <laughs> it's a little dramatic. <laughs> to get into what I've been doing this week, it's yeah, been. I feel like first of all, I feel like I haven't been playing as much this past week. Uh, I have been insanely busy at work. Mm. Like we are coming up to the end of the semester, and let me tell you, do my students need therapy? Like they are stressing. So oh. I have been wildly busy while on the job. And then the last couple of weeks, like we didn't record last week because it was Easter Sunday. And then, you know, we have like the holidays and things like that. And then I between like fencing practice, I've had I had a fencing board meeting last night. So two notes, Friday night. So this past weekend, right? Here's, here's what this has looked like for me. I worked remote on Friday. I had one appointment. I had a supervision at noon and I had an appointment at one o'clock. And then I did some stuff around the house, you know, and then I drove up for my fencing board meeting. And then I drove back to the old college that I went to for, for my master's degree. And I hung out with my old fencing teammates because we have a tradition in the old club that the old officers knight the new officers. Mm -hmm. And we were getting a new club president that knew us. And because we were the alumni, the old officers came back to knight uh, the new guy, which I think we actually forgot to do, and we just got appetizers and then kind of drunk. Um, it was a good time. <laughs> and then the next morning, I woke up, drove home, uh, worked on my newsletter for my fencing club, and then drove to a fundraiser for a, a family member, like a memorial fundraiser that I was at till like 11 o'clock, got home at midnight, saw a bunch of people in VC, and was like, that's 15 people at midnight, dog. I think I just got to go to bed. Uh, and then woke up today and spent 40 minutes doing Achievement of the Week. This is the biggest Achievement of the Week we've had in a long time. Oh, wow. So I've not been playing as much this week, but when I have been playing, I have been trying to bust my balls within the Sepulcher. So if you're not in TNL, or you're newer to the Discord, or maybe you're not newer and just haven't been paying attention, um, Sibling, Tiki Mug, and TMD have kind of in tandem developed this speedrun leaderboard for the clan 
which has been the most motivating thing at first for me to do Hollowed Sepulchre because I, I, I speed, I'm gonna go fast, right? Um, and it's actually made me pretty good at the first full four floors of the Hollowed Sepulchre. It's also led to me getting like really pissed off. Like I'll get a speed run floor and I'll miss a tick and I'll log out. Like I won't even like continue. Like I'll just get mad at myself. Um, so I've been finding that that's not the healthiest way to do oh, no. Hollowed Sepulchre, which doesn't feel great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the leaderboard has been fun to compete with because it's there's like four people right now. It's me, TMD, D4 Drake, and Fear uh, are kind of fighting for the Hollowed Sepulchre spots. Um, and it feels good to to compete against other people because like it's hard, but like I saw D4 Drake get a time last night. I'm like, how the hell did you shave nine seconds off of my PB on floor three? Like, what in the world? How'd you get a 51 second PB? Like, bruh. So it's things like that that I'm like, now I gotta get back in that bitch. I got 92 this past week. Whoa, nice. Floor five is a different animal. I, I feel like I've said it about the other floors. Like, you could talk about, like, you know, oh, the last obstacle on floor three is really difficult. Because when you first see it, the, 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 the last obstacle on floor three with the darts and the fire, yeah. it is. Once you get good at it, two clicks, you're through. Mm -hmm. If you get there in the right timing, uh, it's two clicks and you're through and it feels good. I don't struggle with that one anymore. There are some ones on floor four, like, you know when the, the blue sword is flying and you have the darts coming down? And you have to either outrun the sword or teleport to the other side of the sword at the end of floor four. That one caused me to close um, some barriers sometimes. But that one really isn't a problem for me anymore. It's annoying because of the timing of the blade, right? Mm -hmm. That you sometimes have to wait. But overall, it's not too bad. Floor five is an amalgamation of the most difficult goddamn obstacles in the Hollowed Sepulchre. Even like the easy ones are like four times longer than anything you see on other floors yeah like i have been that last obstacle had me rolling the other night i was so so tilted the other evening on that on that final obstacle if you guys don't know the final obstacle of the hollow sepulcher there are flame guards on both sides there are darts coming at you there is lightning on the floor um and it is it's long it's the longest obstacle in the sepulcher i'm pretty sure um and it's hard and when you fail there's no like mid checkpoint you just go right back to the beginning mm. so you can get to the very end like i did a couple of times and then run behind a dart but you run behind a dart a tick too soon and you get caught in it's like true tile tail range or whatever and you get sent all the way back to the beginning it is infuriating the hollowed sepulcher is hard but it's kind of fun yeah like it feels good I'm, I'm getting better at floor five i'm getting better at clicking on floor five and i can see that difference and it feels better you know there will be a day where floor five is easy and i can compete i think like on the way to 99 if i can get like a sub six minute total sepulcher time i'll be content with that um but it's challenging, dude. It's a challenge I've not really faced in this game in a very long time. And in that way, it does feel good. Yeah. Um, but holy shit, is it an egoing piece of content? <laughs> like, like, I stepped into the Fortis Coliseum for the first time and was like, oh, this is Inferno. Okay, I can do this. Like, Fortis Coliseum, I have yet to get a quiver because I've yet to make it past, like, Wave 7. I really have not tried that much. <laughs> um, but... I, I looked at stuff and it looked familiar. I was like, I can handle this. I just need to like watch a guide and figure out how to do it. Sepulcher is it's felt totally different. Um But it's good. It's well designed, it's fun, and it it validates me in standing by that like XP in this game should be awarded to people who are better at the game. You can get the best XP per hour if you're good at the mini game or good at the skill, right? Not necessarily that you can pay for runners or that you mm -hmm. can tick manipulate, right? It, it should be a skill-based XP gain. And I think the Hollowed Sepulcher still reflects that very well. And even when I do shitty at the Hollowed Sepulcher, I'm getting like 50 or 60K an hour. So when I have my like, <laughs> I get like a nine minute or a nine and a half minute um, Sepulcher completion time, I'm still getting some pretty decent XP. Um, 
And it's not like overall, it's not bad. It's not easy, but it's not bad. Um, other than struggling at the Sepulchre, though, I've been AFKing Redwoods, which on the total flip side to agility is going to be the greatest thing <laughs> since sliced bread. Redwoods, I don't even pay attention. I blink and I have like 100k gained. Redwoods are great. Yeah, I love Redwoods. But I've been, I've been, I have like 1,030 laps at Artie. And I gotta level with you. I don't care how hard the sepulcher is. There's no way I can do this straight through to 99. There's not a chance in hell that I do 11,000 laps at Ardoyan. I will, I will grit my teeth and bite the pillow through Hallowed Sepulcher before I do this straight to 99. Like, this is a different kind of like nauseatingly boring. And I'm debating whether or not I was correct in that mining is the worst skill. Because I gotta, I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you guys. I don't miss mining, but boy, do I miss a seven minute AFK thing when I have <laughs> shit to do. I miss having, I miss clicking, forgetting, hearing doom seven minutes later, smashing right back to the star. I do miss that when I have work to do. Um, but I got redwoods, I got barbarian fishing, I got karambwans. You know, I got a lot of, I've got like smithing, for example, if I want to do, uh, you know plate bodies or i've got like long bows if i want to do fletching it's like i've got a lot of other afk things coming up agility is like the least afk of the skills <laughs> and it just doesn't feel good um finally I, whatever idiot suggested that i do 18 laps of hollowed sepulcher a day is a moron and he clearly has not tried to do 18 laps of hollowed <laughs> sepulcher a day um because holy shit that is not gonna happen like, I know realistically it could, but goddamn, at my current pace, 18 laps is like three and a half hours of Sepulcher. Every day. Because I'm that slow. Yeah. Like, it's, I really got to lock in. So here's my, my master plan. I got to lock in. If I can get 99 or close to 99, like halfway, most of the way through 97, like firmly in 98, um, before spring go, which we'll talk about here soon, um, I th we're maxing by RuneFest without question mm. because this skill is so active but also so slow that this is going to be my final hump. Rune crafting, we can bust our balls at Guardians of the Rift. We can fork over some ducats for some lava runners, or we can just blood rune craft on the podcast or soul rune craft. I've never soul rune crafted before. Um, like it's. I, I'm feeling good if we can get agility close to 99 or 99 period by Springo because Springo is going to be like a 20 to 25 day break from maxing, you know, because I'm going to play bingo fervently and then I'm probably going to burn out and play another game like I always do after bingo. Uh, and I, I want to be content in what i'm working on yeah. and making sure it's not agility so that's where i'm at that's been my week um i don't know if i've done anything else of note because i i've not been pvming and it makes me feel bad because i want to i want to click boss did i want to kill monster i want to click boss instead i have to click greener greener red box you know <laughs> my my skilling aside how are you doing, Michael? What what have you been up to? I have been doing a lot of stuff in the last two weeks. It feels like forever since we posted an episode, but if you guys are listening to these like in the future and it's just back to back, you know, it doesn't feel like that. But we definitely took this is it's been a long two weeks. time. It's over two weeks because it's been two weeks since we posted an episode, and then it's like five days before that since we actually recorded with Mod Rice. Um, great episode, by the way. It you haven't heard that one uh be sure to check that out but huge I, shout out to mod rice yeah. that, was a, that was a fantastic episode thank you mod rice i have been hard at work getting my account ready for bingo because i've said it for a long time at least since the beginning of the year that i don't think i'm gonna be able to play bingo on this account um i i burned out really bad <laughs> after after leagues and then I've, I just kind of felt a little scatterbrained in my goals. And the, the things that I wanted were basically the trifecta. I wanted the trident, I wanted a blowpipe, and I wanted a whip. 
I got a whip before uh, League started, which is great. And I was looking at, you know, what I thought was a massive Slayer grind and potentially camping Zolra. And it was daunting. And so I kind of resigned myself to not playing bingo on the group Iron Man. I'm like, you know, I'll sit this one out and we'll take it. We'll take it in fall. We'll go in the fall for the group Iron Man. I was like, I'll just play on my main. It'll be more fun. But the more I thought about it, and after we had our tile meeting, I thought, you know what? I think progressing my Iron Man would be a lot more fun. And so I set the goal last week around this time that if I could get 87 Slayer and a Trident before bingo, that the blowpipe be damned, I'm just going to play on the group Iron Man. Um, there's other things besides a blowpipe that would be fun to, to grind out before bingo if I can get a Trident. You know, I can still send gauntlet attempts. I'm, <sighs> Bofa seems like so far away. But I can be raiding. Just gotta get lucky. You just Literally, just get have lucky, to be lucky. Baby. <laughs> my my, <laughs> low key. I'm hoping that in these times that I'm practicing the regular gauntlet, that I'm just gonna get spooned a, uh, an enhanced at the regular That's gauntlet. I green logged gauntlet with 96 regular and one corrupted gauntlet, and I, I had it green logged because I got the enhanced seed like shortly after it came out. I feel yeah, like, like if great. it came out in that spring, I got it in that July. Uh, <laughs> and then it's spent possible. basically all the money in my bank on uh, on getting it corrupted. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Now, if I get the enhanced seed, there's the, you know, the dilemma of not having any sort of armor seeds to go with it. So there would be more gauntlet that would need to be done. But it's one major part of that goal knocked out, which would be great. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'm fine with that. I'm just happy to be playing on the, on the group Iron Man or bingo. Um, another big catalyst of that was actually getting my construction done. Uh, in the last two weeks, I banked all the planks that I needed for 84. And then I actually have enough planks to get to 85, funny enough. Um, I might go to 85. It'll just make boosting for stuff a lot easier because if I can get 85, then uh, I can boost for the, the, the ornate jewelry box, I think it's called, um, mm -hmm. without a stew. So as long as, I can, as long as I can get the jewelry, the items needed, which I think TMD can craft them, I can get the ornate jewelry box. You just need the dragon stones. It's like 10 glories and 10 rings of wealth or something like that. Oh, like I have the dragon stones. a lot of dragon stones. I have the dragon stones. Um, I've been doing a lot of Slayer, and you get hella keys from that. So... And the dragon stones, I, I got. I did a blood belts task last night, and I got two cut dragon stones from blood belts. I think that's incredibly rare, and it, I don't know. I feel like I just hit the rare drop table twice because I don't think cut dragon stones are on their drop table. Uh, so all that to say, I got eighty seven slayer last night, and I'm currently doing my first ever kraken task. It only took four skips at Konar. And I feel really bad because I didn't extend them before I got the task. So she only assigned me 93. So I'm using, definitely using a bracelet of slaughter to try and extend it out. But we're going for the trident right now. And if I can get the trident, that's, I mean, it's just going to make this account feel like a real account. Like already, I feel like I have a real account because of the house upgrades. I got to 80 construction and got a fairy ring. I got the rejuvenation pool. I got the fancy jewelry box and I put a lunar altar in the house. Those four things alone have just boosted morale to be able to like play this account more efficiently. I was able to do all that before, but I had to like have house portals, like, like not a house portal, but like I had to have a teleporter in like to lunar isle into the South graveyard. And I had to carry a bunch of jewelry in my bank. Like I could do all that stuff before, but now it's just it's in the house and it's in one place and it feels so good. So if you guys are debating whether or not you should spend the ducats on getting 83 construction or 84 construction, just do it. It makes this game feel playable when you have so much like convenience in one place and it's a quick house teleport. Whether or not you take like, you know, whether you're on 
any spellbook, you can still access your house, which then has access to the rest of the game through the jewelry box, and, and you don't have to like fumble around with stuff in your inventory. So makes it really, really fun. Um, and you know, I'm just having fun. I'm having fun. Uh, 87 Slayer last night, Kraken Task this morning, and we're, we're cheering. It's good times. <laughs> The one Sounds thing like that's, you are having quite a good time. Yeah, I am. Uh, the one thing that's kind of bothering me is they updated this the the clue scrolls to where it says you have a sneaking suspicion you would have gotten a clue scroll. I've seen that like five times, and I just I don't want to do my clues. Just guilt tripping me into saying, yeah, I know I have a hard clue in my bank. I don't want to do it right now. I saw that once at Muspa. It was like the one of like the few times I've killed Muspa this year. I got the, you have a sneaking suspicion you would have received an elite clue. And I was like, oh shit, I forgot they made that update. Because <laughs> I, I was like, did I, did I get just cocked out of a pet? But like, no, it was, it was a clue scroll. But. Oh, speaking of pets, I got my first pet. I got the, uh, the rock golem uh, at Calcified Rocks, Calcified Deposits. Such a, such a great mining method. We'll, we'll get into more of that. Uh, it as our main title content, but like we have no idea what this main title content is. By the way, we, we're just kind of Michael and I texted each other. <laughs> My, I think. Let me read the messages that Michael and I exchanged this morning. Um, I texted him at nine thirteen, and I said, "Howdy, what are we talking about today?" He said, "Good morning." Hmm. I got nothing. Do you have any ideas? And we could talk more asleep. about Varlamore and more of stuff we discovered since it released. Kind of ramble. I fell back asleep. I woke up at 11.15, and I said, I'd be down. What we've been up to, Barlamore, misspelled it, <laughs> RuneFest, stuff like that. And then Michael said, sweet. So this episode is going to be, I don't want to say a disjointed shit show, but we're kind of just like, we've been gone for a while, because like the last episode we had wasn't like a structured, like a normal XP waste episode. Um, and we took a week off last week. Let, let's let's just start with that. Why did we take a week off, Michael? We, we took a week off. I, yeah. I wanted to do an episode, but Michael said, no, we have to do something else. And it was probably for the best. What did we do? We did uh, bingo stuff. And if you are listening to this right now, if we are in your ear holes, there's two things that you can keep in mind. Number one, we need captains. So if you go to TNL, the Discord, and you would like to be a bingo captain. Not everybody's going to be a bingo captain, mind you, but if you've played in TNL bingos before and you think you have what it takes, sign up to be a captain. And if you're in the TNL Discord, you probably already know this, but maybe some of you don't. Bingo signups are live currently as we speak. So if you head over to the TNL Discord, go to the announcements channel, you can find the bingo signup, the general. Just sign up. If you don't want to be a captain, uh, if you do want to be a captain, please sign up with both. We would, we would love to have you as yeah. a captain because... Regardless of what TMD tells you, if you are a captain, you have to sign up on the sheet yeah. because last year, TMD tried to say that you didn't have to and then it threw off the formula. It was me, not TMD, but TMD got pissed off at me for it. Uh, so if you're a captain, sign up as well, because signups are live right now. And for the poor souls in the recording booth chat, we're talking in the future. Signups open on 100%. Monday the 8th. You yeah. guys are, you guys, <laughs> so you guys don't have to go looking for it. It's not the, the recording booth chat. You guys are good. Um, but yeah, for the know. people listening on day of release, signups are open, baby. April 8th, they opened up. Uh, <laughs> and when is bingo, Oxy? Bingo starts on Saturday, May 4th. Saturday, Star May Wars 4th, Day. and it ends exactly Star Wars Day. We, we should do a Star Wars themed bingo. Um, <laughs> and it ends on Sunday, May 12th. So you guys have the full, I think it's nine days to play. It'll start, I want to say, usually we've been starting bingos at about noon Eastern time. Um, the only people that kind of screws is the Australians. So hopefully you guys can pop a couple cups of coffee or energy drinks and really get going. But Europeans, it'll start in the evening. Americans, it'll start in the morning or the early afternoon. And then in general, it runs until about 8, a 8 p.m. Eastern time on May 12th. So you guys have about nine whole days to get in there um, and play as much bingo as you can. 
no gimmicks this time. There's nothing wild and crazy. It's just a regular, usually that's our thing for Springo. In Springo, we make a regular bingo board that people can compete in and not have a bunch of questions. And then fall bingo, we get kind of drunk or kind of high and think, what's the worst idea we can think of for a plan? <laughs> And then that just sort of like develops from there for fall bingo. I'm cooking with some fall bingo ideas right now. And if we can get a proof of concept ready post bingo, it's going to be the magnum opus of events. Ooh. But that's for fall. Um, yeah, I think this board's what? Eight by nine this time? Yeah, eight by nine. Let's give, let's give them a little taste. It's a big board. It's, it's a the big biggest one. board we've ever done. 70 something 74? tiles. 74? 73? It's, I it's a big one. I can't math. 72. <laughs> 72 tiles. Hell yeah. And we're, they're they're full nine. tiles, too. It's not like get a... get so, Like, we, we, we pack them in. It's not like cheesy one-off things, you know? I, I, I can give examples, but I don't want to. How about that? Yeah, surely, surely no one's going to black it out. It's what they're saying in the recording. Booth surely. Track. It, it, it genuinely depends. So if... I think last time we only had 20 captains. And the like, we we had a hard time with the numbers last time because in fall bingo last year we did skill tree bingo, which playing skill tree bingo was great. Planning skill tree bingo and dealing socially with skill tree bingo was a nightmare, but playing skill tree bingo was a lot of fun, right? And we kind of went back and forth of like we only had twenty captains, we had like seventeen to twenty player teams, so did players not black out the board until the last day because the tiles were locked like if the tiles weren't locked would teams have blacked it out quicker or if there were less players on teams would would the team that blacked it out have blacked it out at all mm -hmm. right so that's why we're really pushing for captains because 20 person teams are kind of fun like i had a good time with my team shout out to c4 um <clears throat> but it's really not great for competitiveness when you got 20 teams of people in a 350 person event, you know? Yeah. Because the board, it's, it's really hard to make tiles that don't get finished, you know? And there are some tiles like we know won't get finished in a week by most teams, but we're not going to put them on there because we're not going to put tiles on there that teams just cannot finish, right? Like there won't be get 10 infernal capes as a tile. Like that's not, we don't have enough people signing up for bingo who can consistently do that. You know, Raccoon says full or uh, assemble the full Inquisitor set. I have found over the years that the RNG based tiles doesn't matter. You would think putting something on there like full Inquisitor is impossible. No one's going to do it. And then you're going to watch some Iron Man crack off the hauberk and the plate legs on B2B kills. And then over the course of the week, two other people get the mace and the helmet. At, at Fazani's nightmare like you would be you will never see a nightmare drop for the rest of the year but that week one team will get the entire inquisitor set like it will be insane so we're talking like it's got to be skill blocked things you know or some things that are so rng dependent that like it's not even fun mm -hmm. um but yeah i i, I think this board's gonna be good i think we may have to I have hope. some tough conversations uh with some people who signed up as co-captains and move them to the captain spot I'm talking to myself nope. i know what you're thinking i'm not mm. I'm, oh, I'm oh serious. you're talking about you yeah no no, no I'm michael serious. is a, michael would make a great captain yeah. there's a lot of people who signed up as co-captains who could captain their own team and we desperately need it so if you signed up as a co-captain seriously consider being a captain because it's only going to make everyone's experience better the more captains we have you can do it. I, don't, I mm, believe you can do it. I don't know if that's entirely true because I think a big piece of the co captain You just don't want to lose Nate. I, I don't need to... I, you, listen, <laughs> first of all, no, 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 no. It's not a... I, I'm not losing Nate. I don't care who signs... Nate Dog. that's my heart and soul, salt to the earth, is going to be on my team. I don't give a fuck what other co-captain's got to go. But what I'm saying is I think it, it brings a special dynamic to a team when you have two leaders who work so well in sync together when you have someone like jamie and shadow who have been on bingo teams for years when you have someone like hyla and troll who do content all the time right when you put those people together as captains 
it creates a synergy that the rest of the people who get drafted, regardless of whether or not they know the captains, they're in a good spot, right? You know, even when you have players like Hunchy and Jessica, they're not like Blorva Infernal Cape gamers. They had a fantastic team last time because they're good co-captains for one another. So I don't necessarily think that like forcing co-captain duos to split up because we need more captains is the best idea. I think we just need to like, hey, if you're higher ranked in the clan, I know you want to play with your friends, but if you don't already have a co-captain locked in, you guys are going to make good captains. It really doesn't take that much. You know, we, we ask that you like have a quest cape that kind of like that, that requirements even gone down because of some of the stuff that's come out over the years. But like in general, we want our co-captains to have access to every part of the game and an understanding of most of the game. You don't have to be a giga gamer. You don't need a huge bank. Understand how the game in general works, right? Yeah. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people who haven't signed up as captains or co-captains that would make spectacular captains. And if you signed up as a co-captain and you think to yourself, you know what, maybe I can be a real captain. I think I'm going to break from my co-captain and do it. Um, as long as you're not Nate Dog, that's a great idea. Go ahead, be my guest. We'd love to have you as a captain. Um, but if you haven't signed up yet, I, I promise you, especially if you're an old timer, if you're a regular in TNL, you're going to make a good captain. So, really, the but only I, thing I don't we think ask, we should be splitting up all co captains, you know? I'm just saying the more people that are our captains, the less players we have on teams. And I think it would make for a better event because time played wins bingo. More people on your team, that's more time played. So like we can make it a little bit more of a a challenge if you have less people on the team. Cuz right now as it stands, if we didn't do anything, we're probably going to have over 20 people per team. That's a lot of people. Cuz I'm expecting if, if bingo follows the trajectory of past events, yeah. we're going to have a lot of people signed up. Yeah. Uh and literally like if if you have any questions, please reach out to us. You can you can tag a mod or an ad, you know an officer in events chat in TNL, and we can talk to you about what it takes to be a captain if you have any questions. But literally, we just ask that you be you would be available. Like if you're going to be able to play for about three hours that entire week, it's not going to be the most uh, helpful thing for you to be a captain. There are some time commitments. Number one, drafting your team. There's going to be a few hours on a Saturday or a Sunday for drafting your team. Could be longer. We've done a short draft. We've done a long draft. So, you know. I think the, the spring, the fall bingo draft was beautiful. Yeah. Fall bingo draft. That was, it was like four or five hours. We got all 350 people drafted. Yeah. We also introduced, um, it, I don't want it to sound mean for players. It's an auto draft system where if the captain can't make it or the captain has to go away for a while, they can auto draft players because we have a we basically have like a like how what do you even call it we have like a like a it's skill a tracker yeah it's like a system yeah it's, it's a system not, not a skill tracker it, like when you see the bingo sign up those all have like various points associated with them and it's not meant to be a toxic thing it's meant to help captains gauge like where people are at for drafting and if you can't make it we'll just auto draft the next highest player for a captain so that really helps the draft move along um Shout out to the, the fall bingo captains for making the draft go so goddamn quickly. Yeah. Last year. That was great. Yeah. So with the draft, which Oxy said, you know, four or five hours on a weekend, um, there's going to be the task of inputting all of your team's drops, keeping track of that on a spreadsheet. So if you're good at spreadsheets, it might be your thing. And then Even also if you're just not good at spreadsheets, sure. just copy and paste. Dog. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> we make it so you don't have to be good at spreadsheets. But if that's something you like doing, that could be a you know, massive plus for being a captain. If data entry and like organization of stuff is, is your thing, then this could be an opportunity for you. Because when you think bingo captain, you don't really think of that aspect. So I'm just trying to shed, you know, another light on on uh, what it takes to be a captain. And then obviously the last thing is is commitment to morale you know being there for your team organizing people where people go and just in kind of having a general sense of being the leader of the team you're not like the person you know if people have questions obviously depends on who you draft if you don't know how to do tab 
draft some people who do, but like it's definitely not a hard requirement. You know, you, we're not looking the at the we're not looking at the high scores and saying, yeah, you have no top KC, so it's probably you know you're not gonna be a captain. Like we can let that slide. It's just it, you might have a slight disadvantage if nobody on your team knows how to raid. So something to keep in mind. But obviously, we're kind of desperate because <laughs> we want a lot of yeah. captains. That's been the biggest hurdle, I think, in planning a, an event uh, of the size that we do is just how do we figure out teams? And I, suge- I, I suggested just having like a smart system to auto sort teams and we just, you know, pick the most round number and I, that kind of got shut down. And I kind of agree. It is a fun thing. It is a fun aspect of bingo to like, as a captain, be able to pick who you want to play with and, and, it is part of a strategy um, if you're going for the win. But I also think that at some point it's going to get to the point where if there's more than 400 people, which is, it sounds insane. It sounds insane to say, but any more than 400 and we don't get the amount of captains we need, we have to figure something out. I didn't think we would ever have this problem because I'm remembering back to like 2020 and we had 18 people, I think. We were even asking people to play because we had, it wasn't that big for our first bingo. Springo 21, we did have to recruit another team. Uh, Vangor says, what about keeping it clan only? You'd be surprised the amount of bingo regulars and TNL regulars who are not in the TNL clan that you just would not see. And that, that also kind of feels bad because like people who listen to this show, like we have fans of the show who have been with us since like the early days and have never been a part of TNL because they have a clan with their buddies, you know? Yeah. And that just feels shitty to lock people out, you know? A captain incentive program, I mean, like, I don't care if captain's buy-ins are free. Like, that's totally fine. I don't know if that's what we're going to do, but like, I don't care about that. What, what I think is, I'm just trying to encourage captains. Like, I promise you yeah. guys it's not that hard. Not like, hard. the spreadsheet that we have is you just have to copy and paste the picture or the link of the picture from Discord, and you might have a drop-down menu to see who got the drop. And that's mainly just for like fun stat tracking after the fact. The spreadsheet is going to look complicated. It's done for you. You don't have to do anything in it. All of the trackers that we've had, because we've had like XP tiles in the past, we've had case, like boss KC tiles, that is all auto-generated at the click of a button. You don't have to worry about setting any of that up for your team, you know, and genuinely, as far as skill set is concerned, we've seen people of all skill levels perform very well as captain. You do not need to be the best player at in the game to be a captain. I think I've captained every single bingo team that I have been on, except for fall bingo, um, fall bingo 2020, back when I wasn't taking it seriously enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a deep cut for the old timers there um and uh i i think i've captained every single one back when i was like 1700 total level fire cape couldn't spell t-o-b like it doesn't matter you know you can be a captain just just lead your team you guys will be okay i promise being a captain really isn't that scary you know it's really not you yeah. guys can do this i believe in you fully i believe in you I believe in you fully also. <laughs> but more or less, the important thing is signups are open now. Captain signups and player signups will be open until when? The 22nd, 22nd of April? I think. Let's look. The 22nd of April, they will be open. And, and mark my words, we're not taking late signups this year. No. That's... We're not doing it did that in the past and that that just we got yelled at by our other admins and we're not closing signups the day an episode comes out so yeah april 22nd is the last day to have signups open get your signups in by monday april 22nd sign up you guys it's it's worth it it's going to be a fun game fun event captain signups will be open for the duration of signups so if you want to play and be a captain go do that um here's one more thing yeah. i'll say um if you if once you look at the sign up and it looks daunting because there's so many questions there's like what quests have you done do you have this gear what's your total level what's your bank value if that's overwhelming and you're like well I don't want to sign up now because like I plan to do Dragon Slayer 2 before bingo just sign up don't put it off those types of things are not going to be a make it or break it you know 
um, we've had a lot of people ask, and I just want to get this question answered now. You don't have to wait to sign up. We can change things if you want, but that's, I, I would say on very small chance that we're actually going to do it because it doesn't matter that much. The numbers, it's just for data collection. This is not, again, this is not a make or break it. So if you see the list, if you see the sign up, and you're like, I plan to do so much in the next like two weeks, just sign up now. It's going to be fine. Get it out of the way so that by April 22nd, we're not having people ask, like, hey, I forgot to sign up. I was going to do it, but then I forgot. Just sign up now. And if you like, as, go ahead. As someone who has captained, this will be my eighth bingo in a row as a captain for TNL. Um, as someone who has captained hundreds of players of all different skill levels, it does not matter if you don't have a requirement and then get the requirement going forward. This doesn't yeah. apply to like the end game folks. Like if you have everything, this doesn't apply to you. But if you're in like the, you know, hunting for your quest cape, hunting for your barrows gloves, hunting for your fire cape, whatever it is, if you don't have it and then you get it before bingo, it's just going to make it that much better when you tell your captain, I actually do have my full void gear. So I didn't have it a couple of weeks ago, but I saw it on the sign up and thought, God damn it, I should get it. And then I got it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, there is not a universe in which you have minimal anything and then get something and it's not an improvement for 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 the event, you know? Because you'll also have time to like talk with your captain prior. Like you'll have about a week with your team to sort out what you can get done before bingo mm -hmm. starts. Like when I have had I have captain bingo teams before. I almost said coached bingo teams. I have captain bingo teams before where I've seen players hammer out fucking grandmaster quests in like a week now, i've seen people get all sorts of gear i've seen people get you know kills for the first time i myself the first bingo i ever participated in in august of 2020 um i remember telling my team like i i don't know how to do much i have a fire cape and i have a quest cape but i don't know how to do much um and i was so excited because the day before our bingo started i sent a picture to my team chat and it was the uh, the Western Province Diary requirement to kill Zalra crossed off because I killed Zalra for the first time right before that bingo started. And I was like, "I'm gaming, boys." Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I didn't kill Zalra again for several months <laughs> because I said I can kill Zalra, and they said it's probably not worth it for you to do that. I said, "You're right. I don't want to, but I will." <laughs> um, so you have time to improve just sign up dude it doesn't just do it yeah and I'd rather have you sign up like today with whatever requirements you lack than wait till the 23rd and go hi we, we was waiting to do uh the dragon slayer too because it's gonna be too late at that point you know yeah and so maybe use the maybe use the sign up as like a gold sheet if you don't have a bunch of stuff and you're feeling discouraged like Oh, I'm gonna look bad if I if I sign up without a bunch of this stuff uh, checked off. Maybe just sign up and then use it as motivation. A lot of the stuff that we have on there, we have it on there for a reason, because a lot of that stuff is useful for the content that we ask you to do during bingo. It's no re like it's not for any you know we we put that stuff on there for a reason. The quests, all the quests that we have on there, likely there's tiles associated with those maybe so we want to know maybe not <laughs> who knows we want to know are you going to have access to the content that's on the board so if you're if you're putting off your grandmasters if you're putting off your untradeable gear upgrades just go do it now uh do it. after you've signed up obviously so uh, we're excited for bingo it's going to be a good one again may 4th to may 12th signups close april 22nd I think we can talk about Barlamore now. Barlamore. Barlamore. Barlamore is, is, is good content. There's so many bars in Barlamore. Bar, Barlamore. Yeah, but that's what we gotta do. We gotta, that's the next drinking episode. Michael and I are gonna make the Barlamore drinks and we're gonna get <laughs> schmammer drunk and we're gonna call it the Barlamore day. Did they, um, did they release new drinks? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I don't damn. know. But that would be fun if they set that up at in at RuneFest. Just give us a bunch of like tents, call it different bars, and we can do <laughs> Alfred Grimhand's bar crawl and just get Swifty at mm. RuneFest. Swifty? Give give like Mod at a big hug while drunk. That'd be great. That would be know? great. 
I'm excited for Rune but, Fest. Uh, I'm not excited that they aren't like they haven't opened new ticket slots yet. Oh Mega my God, shitty dude. That was the most that was the most stressful morning of my life. But you did it. I <laughs> we're going. I I don't think you guys I was I couldn't find a link. I was on the sign up sheet and I couldn't find the link to find the tickets. So I went to like every I went to RuneScape Twitter, I went to old school Twitter, I went to Jagex Twitter. I'm like, where is the sign up sheet? Like where do I get to the link to buy tickets? And I finally got there and I don't even know what tickets I selected. I was worried I picked like youth tickets because I, w- I just genuinely wasn't sure because I found something. I clicked two tickets and I signed up and I checked out because I am a concert goer. I'm an avid concert goer. I love it. I love going to see bands I love. I also know that most of the time, if the bands I like are at least on the radio, they're going to get sold out immediately. Right? I'm a huge Hosier fan. For those of y'all that don't know, the bird tattoo is a, is a tattoo from Hosier. Uh, the song is called Shrike, and I have a tattoo from that song. Um, I was late by like five minutes to sign up for or to get my spot in line with a pre sale link. In five minutes of not realizing that I could set, set my spot in line, I was 8,000 spots back for the upcoming tour. And I didn't get a ticket. So like, womp, womp. So I knew that like, if they only got 2,000 tickets and 165 or 200,000 people played leagues, I got to get these tickets. Yeah. So I got to work early because they opened them right at 8 a.m. when I got to work. Uh, so I got to work early, set my laptop up, was like hyper stressing. Um, I, I got two tickets. I got to the cart. I texted Michael the PayPal code. It felt like 45 minutes it took him to respond. It took him maybe 30 seconds. It felt like 45 minutes. I was like, it's on your phone. Michael, please. <laughs> like, it was on your phone. Um, and I put the PayPal code in. Got Michael and I have tickets. We're going to RuneFest. The rest of the day, I was like, oh. <laughs> Because I was so stressed. Because so many people didn't get tickets. Yeah. And a special shout out to my boy Escape Caution. I do apologize. I should have bought you a ticket. And I panicked so hard that I just clicked two. And that is on me. And if we find a way to get you a ticket, we will get you a ticket. Because I'm pretty sure he's coming with us to the Airbnb. But I just panicked. I'm like, oh. Michael and I need tickets. I was so streamlined, focused, and panicked that I did not. But oh my god that was the most stressful day that's the most stressful morning i've had at work yeah in so long it going to it didn't need to be that stressful they it felt that I, tickets sold out in two, two minutes thousand seems like a lot but in retrospect when they're in inviting two minutes. a two minutes when they're inviting osrs and runescape three two thousand is not enough I mean, 2,000 players play RS3 these days, but like 2,000 tickets total. Like, oh. We have 2,000 people in TNL. Not in the, I not know. In the, not in the, like, the clan, but like in, in this Discord, Discord like, we have more our, than 2,000. Right now we our have... Our clan alone would have taken 20% of the total tickets. If everyone from the clan bought a ticket, uh, 20% of the tickets would just we go to have, TNL. Like, how many members? 403 so it's a little less than 20 percent because some people have alts in like in the actual clan how many people are in the discord oh, in the discord we have 2197 we're three people away from 2200 total <laughs> i oh my god it was so it was stressful i'm glad we got them and from what i've seen a lot of like a lot of our good friends a lot of our longtime tnl folks also got tickets i don't know if they bought them in like a pack of eight or something like that Mm. but i know some of the euro boys got tickets i know some of our like aot friends got tickets um it's gonna be fun it's gonna be really fun to see people and go out there and experience rune fest but like oh my god it was just i'm still stressed out about it and i have the confirmation that we got them because like literally gone like 802 people were tweeting at the the release suite of like tickets are gone. What do I do? You know, I don't know how many people bought them to scalp because I know some guy tweeted like, you know, I got ten tickets on hand, selling them for three hundred and fifty pounds a piece. And Mod Mark quote like like responded like, No, you don't. We're taking those tickets away. <laughs> and he just like snatched them back up. 
from this asshole that tweeted out that he was scalping. So, like, how much of them went to scalpers? But also, like, the community is so big yeah. that, like, I think if, if they learn one thing from this event, it's that maybe 2,000 isn't enough. I don't know if they need, like, 50,000 50, tickets or whatever. Nuke Moves just got the squirrel. Let's pog. Um, but I, uh, oh, and a Ring of the Gods. Look at that. People are getting all sorts of drops right now. <laughs> um, but pairing with Insomniac to bring RuneFest back is probably the right decision. I'm hoping that the next time they do this, they kind of recognize, like, oh, shit, we have a huge population of players for a 20-year-old MMO. Maybe we got to bump it to, like, 10,000 tickets. Yeah. And just That's see. what I'm thinking. I don't dude. think they have the space to do 10,000 tickets. Um, but I, I think I would hope they release more. I really don't know if they are. And it makes me feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to release more. It really does. Because there's got to be people out there who are like us who bought tickets to further. Like, they bought their planes tickets before they bought their... Like, imagine we didn't get tickets. We already bought plane tickets to Europe. Which is annoying. Like, I wish we would have known that RuneFest had ticket sales because we probably wouldn't have bought the tickets until yeah. now. Yeah. Do not. Thank God Michael and I did not do a, a, a travel thing for RuneFest. So, a little bit of TLDR on what Michael and I are doing. Michael is flying into Detroit, he's flying into DTW. And then Michael and I are driving from my hometown to Toronto, Canada. And we're flying out of Toronto because the seats were like, it was like half the price to get tickets out of toronto yeah we're flying from toronto to heathrow so michael's gonna be you know in london peak peak brit peak british right there for michael um maybe i'll take him to a pub show him the london eye uh and then we're gonna hop on a train north to birmingham um i think that's we haven't bought train tickets because train tickets go on sale like a month or two ahead of time so unless someone's trying to like squeeze us in their car and give us a ride we're gonna take a train which I think is also, you know, pretty quintessential British from yeah. Michael. He yeah. might like that. I'll take, take him on the tube for a little bit. Um, <laughs> the tube's not going to take us to Birmingham, but you know what I mean. Um, and then we're going to, we have an Airbnb that we're going to be staying at. It's like right next to the NEC. So, yeah, I, I don't know how many hotels are over there. So if you have RuneFest tickets and you have not, for some reason, looked into a hotel, look into that shit. Look into that shit like today. Um, because Insomniac is significantly larger than RuneFest. Yeah. And that's going to be in the area at the same time. So I was looking at Insomniac, because they have two a year, I think. And the most recent Insomniac happened a couple weekends ago. They had, like, they had the voice of Shadowheart from Baldur's Gate 3 there. So what? it's not a small event. Like, they're, oh, cool. pulling, like, they're pulling, like, big stars to come out to these things. Um, so I know the NEC is pretty large. So look for your, your tickets now. Look for your hotels now. Like, if you can get train tickets from Heathrow or wherever you are um, to Birmingham, do it now. Don't wait. You know, if you're in the United States, it's, it's cheap to fly out of Toronto if you're close to <laughs> Toronto. Um, it really, like, the ticket, the difference in price, wasn't it, like, it was absurdly different. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember we the thought, difference, like, but I remember going yeah it, it makes sense to it was like at least a thousand dollars cheaper to fly out of toronto than it was detroit which like is it was crazy re, re, it was crazy i will say the, the 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 price difference from heath or from toronto to heathrow versus toronto to birmingham wasn't too different um but the layover times were crazy oh right because we would have to go to like germany or something we yeah there was a i think there was one where we had like a four-hour layover in amsterdam which is like you overshoot england <laughs> to then fly back fly back uh we had one where we had to wait in berlin i think for a little while like not long enough to do anything but like just long enough to like delay our arrival in birmingham for a while yeah but kind of fun because we got an overnight flight and so we'll be yeah. getting to London pretty early in the morning. And my hope is that we can sleep on the plane so that we can wake up and jet lag just won't be, it won't be a thing. I know it still will be a thing. Like, well, obviously we'll be tired, but getting there in the morning feels better because if we still like, if we want to 
find a place to stay in London for the night, we can take a nap. So, so I realize the, our error there. Michael and I are idiots, and we don't know how time works. We're leaving on the 5th. Uh, we're leaving on the 5th, and we're getting there on the 6th. We're leaving on the 4th. Which is... Oh, no, we are leaving on the 5th. No, yeah, we are on the leaving 5th. on the 5th. I'm uh, leaving, on, leaving the on the 5th. You're leaving on the 4th to get to Detroit. We're staying the night at my childhood home, which is going to be weird to have the Michael from the XP Ways podcast in my living room when I wake up. That's going to be weird, <laughs> but we're going to get over that. Um, hope you like cats, Michael. Uh, <laughs> and we're driving in the morning from my hometown to Toronto, Canada, and we're leaving at like 6 p.m., arriving at 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. Yeah. Um, UK time. But we're arriving the next day. So we're arriving on the 6th, which is when we check into our hotel. Yeah. On the 6th. We so check into our Airbnb. Or our Airbnb. Sixth? Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure so we, we do. Have yep. a whole so we day. check in in the yeah. afternoon. So we'll have like, we'll have a couple good hours. We'll have like six or seven hours in London to, you know, mess around for a while, take you to lunch somewhere, see some sights. Um, if there's something you want to do in London, I don't think we'll have time for my favorite part of London, which is the Natural History Museum. I don't mm. think we'll have time for that. And I think if you're a tourist for the first time, seeing other things is probably more important than like watching Oxy nerd out about dinosaurs. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think if we head to Birmingham that evening, we'll probably take a nap at the hotel. And I'm thinking, I don't know what's in the area yet, but for any of you guys who are going to RuneFest, it's not going to be anything official, but I think Michael and I are just going to like hit up a pub the night before and it's going to be like the unofficial xp waste london or xp waste uk whatever it is and we're going to just be like let's hang out and get a little drunk before rune fest um and spend some time together before the convention because the convention is going to be either sitting and listening to jagex or you know there's going to be a bunch of attractions for us to see maybe we'll pop over to insomniac so i imagine all of the xp wasters are not going to be in one spot together um let's go out and grab some drinks the night before yeah we're gonna find somewhere we'll keep you guys posted we'll let you know won't be anything super official not gonna be like a cover charge just like show up and have a pint with the boys you know that's gonna be the goal we'll keep you updated on, before Rune Fest. on whether or not we actually do that i think we're going to but where we go we'll keep you guys updated and if you guys have any yeah. recommendations i know that pixie message me and he's like do you need like a, a boots on the ground coordinator i'm like hell yes we do <laughs> pixies uh, yeah if you, guy. <laughs> if you guys are local and have any local recommendations you know i think for the people who live in london there's a chain there's a there's a there's a british chain that owns all the pubs it's like king's green or green king something uh -huh. It's like the like the Applebee's of British pubs. Oh. Um, so if you guys have something that isn't Green King, because I've had their food <laughs> a lot, because um, they own so many places. If you guys have something that isn't a Green King pub brand, let let us know because I'd love to take take Michael to like something super authentic while in London. Uh, and I know we we shit on English food in one of the more recent episodes, and someone got pissed off at us for it. Um, but it, it's going to be fun for michael to go see we'll get you a little oyster card take you on the tube you'll be like wow why don't we have this everywhere <laughs> this is the greatest public transportation system on the planet and you're not gonna be wrong you can thank um, the automotive the automotive industry for that one i you know i saw something about that earlier people were like oh america doesn't have walkable cities like dude america's only like 200 300 years old like america when these other countries that have walkable cities were made like you spent your whole life in that city yeah you know yeah like it was walkable because you didn't have any other options like there was no vehicles you couldn't like traveling from you know detroit to where i live now took like days because you like did that shit on foot you know but when america was built it could other than being like substantially larger than europe um like michigan is the size of england and that's just like one like small to medium ish size state, you know. But we we kind of need cars, you know, because we're we are just massive over here. Yeah. And then because we're so young, and the automotive industry started here, um, our cities are built around cars, which is not always great. 
So I understand why they're not walkable, but like, damn, I, I would like some smaller towns. I'm referencing the fact that we don't have high speed rail because automotive industries are in our politicians back pocket lobbying against it because it would hurt the profits. But like, I mean, like, yeah, that is definitely a problem. How do you turn some cities walkable though? Like you, what, what's a, so like you really have like smaller sects, you know, that are walkable and you see this in Europe too. Like these old cities that are thousands of years old. Like you look at a city like Prague, that is not designed for vehicles very well. Prague and vehicles do not mix. Venice and vehicles do not mix. Um, but like, there's freeways on the outside of Venice. Yeah. Because you like you have to travel with new technology, right? Even if like the people don't have cars, you still gotta ship shit to these cities, right? You know. Now you could get on all sorts of other tangents, like how does Prague, a city that's built in the fucking 1400s have a gigantic grocery store in the basement of something and it's not this like rinky dink shitty grocery store it's like an actually really nice one but places like brooklyn new york don't how do food deserts exist in the united states when we're the united states and these old ass cities can do it the answer is racism but but like how does that like there's other problems with with united states cities that we could talk about <sighs> right but this isn't the anti-capitalistic know, podcast this is the old school it's about to be baby let's go <laughs> somebody asked, i think it was chaos cleric <laughs> it's like how, how do we get the anti disestablish or how do we get the disestablishment to some he was asking for a, a whole channel where we can rant about capitalism I'm like mm, probably not i wish but probably not <laughs> i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure chaos cleric runs the u.s military too so that's <laughs> a really fun it's a really fun dynamic <laughs> so <there>. good <laughs> so good uh okay so Barlamore Barlamore we got on a yeah big by the tangent. way we we said we talked about <laughs> Barlamore and then just didn't talk about it at all uh we tangented into Man. Runefest which you didn't want to talk about <laughs> Massive tangent. um I I wish you guys could get your Runefest tickets I mean if you don't have Runefest tickets and you're in the area I don't care come come fucking hang out yeah we'll be there we'll be having drinks I mean I kind of want to stop over to Insomnia um. During like a lull, just yeah. to see who's there, you know? Because we have because like our tickets include tickets to that. That's fun. Yeah, they do. I DM'd Submedium because he and I he and I love Shadow Heart. So when we saw that uh, her actress was going to be there, Jennifer I forgot her last name, but Jennifer so and so was going to be there. We're like, dude, we got to go for what? We got we got to go meet Shadow Heart. But I oh, think that was at the okay. most recent because they had one on like the twenty seventh of March or something. Um. Mm -hmm. So I've yet to see the lineup for who's coming to the next one, um, but we'll see. I'll see. What is yeah. what is your favorite thing about Varlamore so far? My favorite thing about Varlamore so far, um, God, that's tough. I haven't got to interact with Varlamore as much as I've wanted to. I think I definitely had the most fun. Um, like hunter contracts stick out to me as a really fun activity but i've not done a lot of them perilous moon sticks out as a fun activity to do with the boys like you get a perilous moon's mask going you just see people run around like that's fun yeah but i've not gotten to do that a lot the coliseum like i'm entirely confident i can get a quiver it's not like the infernal cape where it's this big like oh will he won't he challenge i'm gonna get a quiver i probably get a quiver by the end of the year i need to get in and do it and i just haven't but i think the coliseum is quite a bit of fun you know i've not done the new thieving so I don't know much about that, but people seem to enjoy it. Um, I've not, I've done the the mining, dude. I wish that mining shit came out months ago. Yeah, it's like four. So did that? I don't know if that got nerfed or not, but that's like fifty k an hour. Still not like nerfed. minimal clicking, dude. That I did the last thirty k mining I needed at the calcified <laughs> rocks. That shit is life changing. Agreed. That shit is so good. Agreed. For mining. So but, I'm I'm currently ninety four mining. Since Varlamore has come out, I've gotten like almost 500k mining XP from there. Which, if you don't know, calcified, I think they're calcified rocks or calcified de deposits, whatever they're called. It's the new mining in Camptorum. Basically, you, you have as much, you pay as much attention as you do at Motherload Mine. Uh, and you get about the same rates. Um, it's, it's like the nodes that you're mining last about 60 to 90 seconds. And every once in a while, you'll get a calcified deposit 
which you take to an anvil with a hammer and you, you know, you crush it down and it'll potentially give you a calcified moth, I think it's called. And that moth will teleport you into Camtorum. So it's useful if you're going to be trying to do uh, the Moons of Peril and, and then a Potsley dungeon, uh, or you can just sell them. They're like, you know, eight to 10K a pop, I think right now. So you can buy the teleports? Yeah, you can buy them. Oh, I thought they were untradeable. I was like, damn, dude, I got to actually do post 99 no, mining right and teleports now, here. I right. bought the Quetzal feed because I'm like, I ain't doing that. I didn't know they were tradable, so they're, I just bought all the Quetzal feeds. Spent a couple mil on that a couple weeks ago. Seven point four k right now at the time of recording for the for ain't the teleport. Too bad. So that ain't too bad. And like, if you spend a couple hours there, you'll you'll have enough to sustain yourself at least going back and forth, like doing activities. So if you if you say you AFK doing this at work, and then in the evenings when you get off work, you're going to do other things. You'll be able to get back to Camp Torm pretty easily. Uh, even without, I mean, I say easily, instantly, <laughs> if you have a bunch of these um, calcified moths. The other thing that you get is blessed bone shards. And currently, these things go for five prayer XP per when sacrificed. And, and you know, it's a prayer method. Five prayer XP. Currently, I have 44,000 of these blessed bone shards in my bank. Um, 5 XP per at almost 50,000 of them. That's like 250,000 prayer XP just from mining 500k prayer XP or mining XP. So it's really good odds. It's really good ratios for those. And you get a couple bone shards too by just doing activities around um, Farlamore. Like there's a bunch of different ways. It's not just this mining method. But the mining method. Do you method need is, the sunfire splinters for that? You don't. So you can just actually use regular wine you bless the wine first and then the wine that you bless in conjunction with the shards gives you the prayer xp so if you're able to stack up a bunch of these it can be you know millions of gp uh, millions of xp per hour uh, all at once really really good so i think they said uh just doing the math if, if you were to go from like 40 to 99 mining just at the calcified um I think it's like four, four and a half million uh, prayer XP. And anybody unaware, that's like like 85 prayer from level one. Yeah, it's about, no, it's 87 prayer. Uh, 88 prayer, actually. 88 prayer banked from just getting 99 mining. Pretty insane. That's definitely going to be my AFK activity because I, I've kind of resigned myself to getting 99 mining as my first 99 on this account. I was going to do cooking, and then that just felt kind of outdated. And, you know, I yawned at the idea of getting cooking again, because that would be my, my third or fourth account going for 99 cooking first, when I think it's a, it's, would, I've not seen a lot of untrimmed mining capes. Um, and it's really, for really... For good reason. <laughs> for good reason, sure. But it's really, really easy. It's really, really easy to do um, the, uh, the mining method. Like Oxy said, it's like I, I was getting at full attention. I was getting 45K per hour at 94 mining with a dragon pick. When I'm doing it at work, I get about 35K an hour, which is still very good. Very, very good. So if you've not done the mining method, consider it because it's, it's less AFK than stars, but it's about as click intensive as Motherload Mine but you don't have to worry about like depositing anything occasionally, probably like every two hours, maybe hour and a half, you'll have to go and, and just get all those um, deposits broken down, but it's really not that bad. Really not that bad. Uh, I know that. Can you bank the deposits? I think so. I've not tried. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can bank them. I heard somewhere that you can't, but I've not, again, I did it for 30 K XP and then called it good. So, <laughs> Which is, I mean, I'm glad you got to experience a little bit of it. Um, it's truly wonderful. Uh, I know that, I think it was on the episode with uh, Mod Rice, but I, I previously I had sworn off doing hunter contracts because I think they need a lot of work. They they were asking for feedback and people were writing like novel sized documents 
explaining the what bird, you could do. The bird facts book on yeah. why Hunter needs to be improved. The gospel of bird <laughs> on how to fix Hunter contracts. So, uh, <laughs> so with that in mind, I was like, it just seems like a lot. So, but if you go on Reddit and, and I'm sure there's several links to it in our discord, um, people have figured out a way to like block out certain Hunter rumors using the current system that they have. And if you can get it set up, um, you know, I've heard that Hunter contracts are actually doable um, if you just block out the, the ones that are undesirable. So I'm thinking about doing that because I would like to get 75 or 85 or whatever it is um, to be able to catch the moths in Perilous Moons. Um, because yeah, bare they, hand them. What's that? Yeah, to bare hand them. You can bare hand them, yeah. Yeah. And I'm also, it also feels bad. Like I've been, go, I've been going around Prif and I can't catch the crystal emblems yet because I don't have the, the, the level. So aren't they like 90 something to bare hand though? <sighs> they're 90 something. I think they're at 90 to bare hand, but you only need 80 to catch them with a net. And usually they're by a bank. So you could just, I mean, I only have 71 Hunter. So I think after bingo, I'm going to be spending some time doing rumors uh, on my on my not like AFK time um, just to see if I can get because I mean otherwise if I can't if I can't figure out rumors then I'm just going to go back to doing the what are they called the maniacal monkey method which that I could do at work because that is very very click or not click intensive um, very very easy so with the uh, with the hunter methods, I it's a hit or miss for me now. I'm not going to completely, um, I'm not going to completely rule it out. I just think that it, it could still use more work. Um, but what's the other stuff that's there? So we have, I haven't done the Coliseum. I don't think I'm going to touch the Coliseum because I think you should. I think it's 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 fun. It's low stress. There's little input that you have to actually like try to remain with Bofa and like actual stuff and like see how you feel because like truly it's not like the Inferno where the real challenge comes an hour and a half in like the minute you get you can get the Manticores in six minutes and then suddenly you're faced with like oh shit now I gotta like flick in between enemies mm -hmm. um, so you could get some practice for some pretty high level content fairly quickly in the Coliseum yeah. I think it's gonna be way better suited for players like you who are like, no, I don't think I will <laughs> to good to get in there and give it a try because yeah. it's hard, but I don't think it's so difficult that like it's not out of the question. Don't even bother until you have an infernal cape. Like I think it's way more feasible to get a quiver before an infernal cape for players at this point. Yeah, so. and I think at this point right now, that's the kind of the progression that the game will take is you'll go quiver first because the quiver may help you in the inferno. If you want to take some the sort infernal of... cape does help you in in the in the Coliseum though it's the, the, it's, it's so like hard. the like the the Bofa rigor like debate yeah. like do you do chambers to get rigor to get the Bofa faster or do you do gauntlet to get the Bofa to make chambers faster oh. you know it's they 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 fit on the same power level which feels which feels pretty good I think as far as like ease of difficulty though and like the I don't think Coliseum is going to be as much of a motivation killer as Inferno. Yeah, it's true. Because I know there are people in this in this call right now in the recording booth chat who know all about two hours to just get shit on at the final boss and then have to do it all over again. You know? Yeah. I'm I'm myself am one of them. I don't think the Coliseum's gonna have that, you know? Yeah. And obviously the Coliseum is only going to further your skills for whenever you do go to the Inferno. That's why I say I think that the mm -hmm. the progression of the game will change where people will start doing Coliseum first and really practice and grind out the quiver. And then when the time comes, they feel more, you know, you've got a, a couple uh, soul kills under your belt, then you really understand the mechanics. And that, that would make, that would make the, in, the Inferno click quicker. It would make it, mm -hmm. make the mechanics just kind of um, less of a slog. I know it's like, you know, we talk about, <clears throat> I talk to, uh, Cork, he got his Infernal Cape spoiler alert for Team of the Week. Um, and he was saying that we were in VC the other night and it was like midnight. He's like, I gotta go to bed, but I wanna get to like wave 40 now so that I can just pick up and actually do something tomorrow. It's like I'm gonna log out, I'm gonna get all the boring waves out of the way. 
Like I can sleep through these waves at this point. Um, so I know that at some point you just kind of auto click through the first few waves to get it done. And you, you, you jump into the pit, you dissociate until wave 50 and then you're like, Oh, okay. Oh, it's, it's time to get <laughs> moving. Okay. Yeah. So but that, I, I'm hoping the Coliseum doesn't have that same effect. I think you could get it. No problem. Well, maybe not no problem. I don't think you can get it like if you jumped on your first attempt. Bro, I've but heard that. I definitely think you would have a lot easier time with the Coliseum than you would the Inferno right now. Currently. And I think if you got your quiver, the Inferno is, I think it's mentally and emotionally way more feasible for you with the quiver confidence under your belt yeah. to like legitimately attempt the Inferno. Yeah, for sure. Whenever I do go for that, I think that's going to be how I'll do it. Somebody, I think it was Chaos Cleric, was saying that he thinks that I'm going to get my Infernal Cape on my group Iron Man before I get on the main. And that may happen. If I get really lucky with gear this year, I could start sending attempts on this account. So I feel like you don't give a shit about the Infernal Cape on your main. I feel like it might be easier to do on your main because you could just like get loaned a Twisted Bow <laughs> right. and you wouldn't have to be relying on like the, pro- like the progression of Iron Man to get the cape. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. I think you, it's it's definitely possible for Quiver. Sad day. I just finished my and whole then the then, then, then the cape arc, baby. The cape the arc. The cape arc. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for the cape arc. It's going to be interesting. I don't know if I'll have an Infernal Cape before uh, Stanley comes out, but maybe. I don't really care. It's, it's, I think that's the, the thing. Is like You kind of have to care if you're going to go for an Infernal Cape because it's such a slog. Um, Korg said he did like 50 attempts over the last two months. And that just seems like a lot to me. Like, it is. It's so much. And it's so much time that if I don't care, there's going to be a lot of dragging my feet. And I don't care right now because I don't, I don't wake up thinking that I'm a shitter because I have a fire cape. And I don't think that I'm a shitter because I have a fire max cape. I could care less. So for me, it's not a mo- it's not like the less. motivation. I couldn't care less. Thank you. Um, the motivation is not like trying to boost my ego and and change what other people think of me because I don't care. I'll rock the fire max cape till I die. But some people care, and that's that's why they got their cape. <laughs> I wake up knowing I'm in a shitter with <laughs> a shitter with an infernal max cape. Yes, cast cleric. <laughs> the best 250 milli spent just don't do that you, just 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 wait just wait till you, till the nightmare set in i i had a I feel like i had sepulcher nightmares the other night I mean, that's how much this is stressing you me had out sepulcher had sepulcher nightmares? nightmares oh no yeah not that i would not that like the the like it was ridiculous right like i, I had inferno nightmares where like i my prayers weren't switching or like multiple zucks were spawning at one time or like I was in the lava pit and I wasn't sure, or like Zuck was chasing me through the lava. Um, I think the nightmare was that I was just in the hollowed sepulchre oh. like doing the content. <laughs> like I think that was, I think that was the nightmare that I had. <laughs> that I was trying. Cass Clark put a picture earlier in in the recording booth chat. I can put it on screen right now. And he said the reason Oxy can't interact with Varlamore is because there's a big ass continent in the way. And he put Oxy in Mauritania, and I thought he put me at Tob, and I was gonna say. Case Clark, that's not even where Tob is located. He didn't. The fucking rat put me at the Hollowed Sepulchre. So <laughs> that is, we are out here struggling. Oh, I didn't even see your our name way on there. Agility. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are struggling through agility, but we're going to get there. And yeah, I, I think it's, it's I'm not going to get off on the maxing tangent again. Do it. <laughs> Varlamore good. Varlamore, Varlamore good. I want to interact with it more. I want to interact with it a lot more. Um, and that's the beauty. I'm of the excited game, for the day that can that can finally happen. Hmm? That's the beauty of the game. Is like we have years to go there. There are still things that people have not figured out, which is so cool. Tiki is like Tiki, losing his Tiki mind. Tiki DM me the other day. <laughs> he said, "Do you think if I smoked a shit ton of weed and got like violently high, I could figure out the red coin thing?" I'm like, "It's possible, dog." And then he didn't DM me back. So somebody check up on Tiki because I don't know if he's alive or not. I don't know if he's solved the red token question. (laughs) He might still be tripping. I have no idea. Um, (laughs) Yeah, he's like, 
not not freaking out, but I, I I can hear the tension in his voice about it. He's just like, yeah, we don't know. I mean, we know how to get them, and we know the the we know the the sequence and why it happens, but we don't know why they're there and what you do with them. So, <laughs> yeah, check on your friends, guys. If they if they care about the mysteries, check on your friends because there's a lot of them. The thing that I'm very curious about, and somebody may have figured this out, but there's three doors. In the room where you check the chest for the moon's apparel, there's three doors. One you enter from, uh, and then you can run all the way across the room, and that takes you back to the other, the other dungeon rooms. But if you turn, like if you're facing the chest, it's either on the left or the right, but if you turn, there's a door that has a little cave next to it, but like you go to the, you go to the door and it doesn't let you go in. I don't know if that's a part two thing or if that's we just haven't figured out how to get into that cave and what it does. What it seems like to me is that's like just the exit. Oh. You know, because that, that kind of there's like a fourth entrance in that like first little lobby there that you can't get in. Yeah. Soggy Waffle says it goes back to the main room, like the main thing that you started hmm. um, and not another part of the dungeon. And that might be intentional. Like that might not change because again, it, moon's apparel is a is a casino and not a piece of content um but it could be an achievement diary yeah. reward maybe it's a part two thing maybe it's like a kc thing like hey you've proven yourself in a pot sleep we're gonna unblock this thing for you after like mm. 500 kc or something like that um mm. i don't know could be i've got i've got like 20 no i think i'm at the 30 kc now which is cool i've only gotten two pieces so far i really really want all of it because after the metas have come out, I think that all of the armor is pretty decent for, for where I'm at in my account. People are saying that the Adelatl could replace the Bofa in some low level metas. Like if you were if you're a low level, for instance, a mid gamer, and you're like, wow, I could really use a Bofa here, and you have the Adelatl, like it probably is just as it's going to be decent. I want to say it's just as good. It's not just as good. But um, in certain scenarios, like, can you get an Adelatl only Zolra kill? I don't know. But if I had the gear, maybe we could try it. Um, so those types of things are exciting for me. I would love to try and just bust out a bunch of Perilous Moons after bingo because I want all of the, all of the armor. And the Blood Moon stuff, that's like budget bandos. Even though it does take money to repair it, like budget bandos. And that... I. You can't beat that. <laughs> and it has high mage defense, which is great for, for God Wars. So when you're going for your actual Bandos and you're, you're killing uh, Krill and all those other ones, it's like, you can't beat it. It's really good. So if you ever want to play on your groupie, Oxy, I think you know what to do. I played on my groupie recently. I got guilted. I made the mistake of joining a call with a bunch of other group Iron Men. <laughs> And TMD came in and guilted me into doing a, a Tombs of a Masket. Yeah. Um, if he just sent a gif of a, of a cat gagging oh in my that, that track. Like, we did a, like a 200, I think. And it was fine. I didn't die. I didn't struggle. I had a shit ton of supplies. Because I can do regular TOA no problem. It felt bad because I just couldn't hit the boss. <laughs> like... Like RCB Karis Warped Scepter, it's just a feels bad combination. You know, it's a it's a feels bad combo, and man, it just like I can do every piece of content on my GIM that I've unlocked, no problem. Oh, I just I don't want to spend a million years at these bosses you know like that that's truly what the issue was for me is it just it felt kind of crusty to, to i think you're just to, just to, to not hit you're like used to i didn't, on a normal I didn't account. hit any rubies at zebek until the enrage phase with my rcb like i will say the hunter's crossbow is fun the the three tech hunter crossbow mm -hmm. that wasn't too bad uh I don't have I have ancients, but I don't have access to get to the spell book very quickly and CBA running to the desert. Plus I only have like seventy or eighty something mage. Um so I don't have ice barrage for monkey room. 
Um, but like Baba felt fine. Aka felt fine. Kefri felt, eh. Just because, again, I'm not hitting the boss. Zebek felt, eh, because I'm not hitting the boss. P3 Wardens felt, eh, because I'm not hitting the boss. Like, that's, that's kind of where I've landed with it. Like, otherwise, it, like, eh. part of me wants to, to take, you remember those old free-to-play accounts that we made? Yeah. <laughs> like, years ago? Part of me wants to take that, bond it up, and just, like, while I'm training fishing or woodcutting, just like put it on steroids and get like a, a 1750 alt with like a quest cape that I could just like use to money make or scout or run supplies as like a main. I watched an Ingus video where he did that with his alt. And I know Ingus will take like three months to do shit religiously and then make a 20 minute video and it will make me be like oh my god i could do that <laughs> and then i don't i forget the like oh he spent 78 days doing that i ain't got that kind of time you know like part of me wants to get ethel stoma a membership account uh and just like get like a supplies alt or something going you know because like jamie's about to hit 99 on on jam jars alt 99 mining at Amethyst of all oh. places. So like, even, like she's never going to run out of money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is sick. I got to add that's another one for achievement of the week, baby. Tank Neek with 99 fletching. Yeah, put the ta achievement of the week is going to be massive, by the way. Should we get to achievement of the week? Send him the break. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we can, but like truly I think we'll we're, we're okay. You know, we're not taking You're just going to hear me talk a lot, you know? That's that's all you're going to get. <laughs> I think uh, for your for your alt idea, you could do that. Everything you could do, everything you want, except for make money and run supplies with your group Iron Man. But you can make me money and run me supplies. So, like, what's the you know what's the? That's all my group Iron Man has ever done. No, it's is not. make you money and give you stiff. Come on, now. Your group Iron Man has brought me more joy than you would ever know just by you being there. Not for the things you offer me. Just say I provided Barrow's gear. I provided I provided Berserker rings. I provided ammunition, and now I have nothing on the account. <laughs> I gave you all the shit. You've got everything. Hit me up when you need something fletched. You know, I um, I, I listen. My summer is going to be very chill, so maybe we'll play three accounts at a time over the summer. But mm, we'll see. Okay. I don't think that's going to happen while I'm at work, but. We'll see. You could at least play two accounts. Stoma can take a break. Ethel, uh, Ethel and Oxy. <laughs> <laughs> the dynamic duo. Uh, I have an alt account, and it happens to be 2277. So anytime you need to log in, well, let me know. Are you not on the Jagex launcher with your main account? I am, but like, you can have my Jagex launcher info. That seems like a terrible choice, Michael. Don't do that. If there's anyone in this world, anyone, Including my mother. If there is anyone I trust, it is you. So I'm don't honored. give me that. Please don't do that. <laughs> I'm honored. Please don't give anyone your Jack X account. Just login. you. <laughs> and maybe my wife. <laughs> she has it already. I wouldn't even I wouldn't I wouldn't even de iron your Iron Man. I would just like put it in awkward situations. I'd like log you out in the inferno. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. With like you. I get as far as I could possibly get in the Inferno with nothing in my inventory besides like frog tokens, and you'd be like, "Where am I? What? What did I do?" And I, you'd just be like camped out on like wave thirty, you know. You'd log in with with no, that'd be the funniest shit. All right, Michael's gonna give me his info. One night when he's not expecting it, I'm gonna log out on wave fifty one, and he's gonna have no idea, and he's gonna be like. Why do I hear music? What the <laughs> oh my god, and he's going to die immediately because he's not going to know where he is. That's going to be great. That would be hilarious. That would actually be funny. Now, you would need my uh you would need my email account because it sends a, like a a five digit random code word. Yeah, but like once I'm in, I'm in is the thing. So I'm saying don't do that. That's true. Because once I'm in for for your main I'm in for your Jagex account well, and I can play your GIM as long as the off stays active. Well, yeah. So on my device, as long as, okay. So how the Jagex works is like you can log into 
your Jagex launcher, but you would only have access to my two accounts. And if you wanted to play your account, you would either, you would either need to have it logged in already, or you would need to log out of my account to then log in your account. So it wouldn't, I don't think it's as like crazy as you think, like you're going to have 100%, 24-7, 365 access to my account. Still, you never know. I know it's not reciprocated because you would never give me, even though you trust me probably with your life, you would never trust me with your risk yeah. account. <laughs> it's just, and that's listen, fine man, to me. A lot. I gave you, I, I think I gave you my details once and I was like stressing my, you made some sort of joke and I changed my password because you made some shitty in passing joke when I gave you my account for the Hanani video. Oh Yeah. <laughs> That was the freaking And I lost I like, your trust. Nope, not doing that. Damn. I, I fumbled the ball, guys. <laughs> Stressed him out too much that he wrote it off completely. <laughs> account sharing is not, it's not against the rules, by the way. If you're just like casually logging into your friend's account, that's fine. There are certain circumstances where you can't get banned. If Oxy logged into my account to get me an Infernal Cape, that's a no-no. Uh, if we were sharing an account to like boost ranks, that's a no-no. Well, like, if you just get on your friend's account and you dick around, that's fine. Jagex told me. My dad is Jagex, okay? <laughs> we have a friend who's a mod. So there you go. Hey, if any of a, you know, if any other mods are listening to this, um, our DMs are open. Hopefully you guys want to be on the show. There's no mods listening to this. I know that. But, like, uh, the off chance that they are, come and be on x We'd love to have you. <laughs> I, I think this seems like a fine time to send you guys to break. We understand this episode hasn't had much of a point, but that's okay. We're, we're coming back after a little bit of a hiatus. We'll be back on the horse next week. Um, hopefully a little bit more in, in XP waste form. Please don't rodeo me, Michael. Good God. Um, <laughs> with that, um, enjoy this commercial. Hey there, adventurer. You're finally awake. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Agent B, and I work with the Gilinor Protection Agency. If you're watching this video, that means you're probably under the supervision of the medical experts here with the GPA. Don't worry, you're perfectly safe. It says here that you were going to try your hand at Criara, but you slipped off of Trollheim Mountain and fell unconscious. That's okay. Happens to the best of us, really. Thankfully, a few of our agents found you all bruised up out there in the cold and brought you back here to recover. Now, your report says that you hit your head pretty hard, so you might remember some things, but be aware that not all of these memories are correct. Any thoughts or memories of blood reavers or ancient ceremonial robes simply aren't true. It's just your brain imagining things to help make sense of the accident. You've been with us for a little while now, so getting back to your day-to-day -day life might be tricky at first. People may have started to spread rumors about you, and some may ask strange questions when you return. Some may make you uncomfortable, and some questions may make your mind think of fake scenarios in order to cope with the stress. Don't you worry, though. We've thought of some replies that'll help you reacclimate to society one question at a time. There is no frozen door. There is no fifth general. The God Wars dungeon has not been altered in any way. She does not exist. She does not exist. She does not exist. She does not exist. Operation, and we hope you have a speedy recovery. My name is Agent B, wishing you the best. And always remember, the Gilinor Protection Agency is here to serve you. You, 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 her. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that reused commercial because I know that I sure did. It's Patreon time. Like I said that every time it's my episode, but it's true. It's Patreon time. Up on the screen right now are the wise old men. Um, the, the real, the bread and butter of our, of our Patreon community. The people who can join us in the recording booth and have a grand old time 
doing it. The recording booth gets to listen to us live. Um, sometimes they get inside looks at things. Sometimes they go looking for the bingo sign up because we told them that it was out and they're like, oh shit, it is. And it wasn't because it didn't come out on Sunday. It came out the following Monday, but this episode came out on Thursday. Anyways, I digress. Shout out to the wise old men. You guys are spectacular. We don't have any new wise old men this week. <clears throat> I don't think. Um, though we are in the month of April. So if I missed you from the last wise old man, you like, subscribed in the last like two weeks we will shout you out next time because i didn't i didn't figure that out but we we'll love you nonetheless um that said we are going to shout out our king black dragon patrons so kicking us off as always that the people who support us at our highest tier we have apathy boston broke 70 chaos's inferno services uh, when he got that cape the day before or the day the episode came out, I was like, man, that's a that my my take about chaos is fire max cape age like milk. That's great. <laughs> that's fantastic. I'm very proud of him. Uh, my dad. Hi, dad. Cloud kicker. <laughs> Cuthbert swole capitalist views on the workplace. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Cuthbert's swole capitalist views on the workplace. Now that's a good name. That's a good name right there. Damon S. Dickie Bird. Elite Oreo Tunker. Hey, that Lolly is my new tentacle mommy. <laughs> that's an okay name. Hey, that Lolly is my new tentacle mommy. Clapscape. My boy HMZ Bop. MT Birchfield, Satanbot666, who does not have a good name. You've taken it too far. Nope. Thumbs down. Pfft. Next. <laughs> Prof Slayer, our third favorite supporter, Ralph. Run Metal 15, Rylithian, Soggy Waffles, Steppy J, Sparky Life, The Big G Jordy, and The Crayola Tallymorn. Thank you guys for your support here at the KBD tier. We do love you guys. You help us do things like go to RuneFest and things like that. You know, I'm, I'm, we're, we're so happy that you guys offer that kind of support. And we're, we hope that we can keep entertaining you to the level of that support warrants. So if we're ever not, let us know because you want to make sure you guys have the best experience possible. We want all of you guys to have the best experience possible with this show. So thank you to all our patrons. If you want to support us, you can for as little as free. Um, but if you want to spend money, it's as little as a dollar. You can head over to patreon.com forward slash XP waste. That link will be in the description of this episode down below. Um, yeah, you guys are lovely. Um, I say we shift over from Patreon to the community question. That's like damn near a month old at this point. Michael, what you got for us? Uh, I think our oldest response is 17 days, <clears throat> which is not, I mean, Sure. Still feels like a long time. We're closer to a month than we are not. I just want to take this this time to shout out Trader Joe's milk chocolate covered peanut butter pretzels. These things are fantastic. Um, if you have a Trader not Joe's, not sponsored. I wish they're sponsored. If you have a, a a Trader Joe's by you, go and pick some of these up because they are fan friggling tastic. Okay. So fun question, not fun question. Community question uh, from seventeen days ago, apparently. How do you feel about the recent blogs and what is your most controversial take? So for those who don't remember or didn't listen to the episode, we talked about the project rebalance and uh, all that ad entailed. So that was two episodes ago. What is this now? Episode, that was like episode 145, 144. I can't remember. I think we are on. Yeah, it was 144. So go back and listen to that. But. We got some responses in people's takes. So OCDM says, my controversial take is that everyone is wrong. I'm in the let Jagex cook camp. I'm tired of hearing everyone's opinion. In God, Ash, and everyone else, I trust. Damn. Okay. <clears throat> I'm kind of with that, too. I, I probably will agree with a lot of these. So we'll just get into it. Mating with Oxy tonight, 666. Really, I don't have an Again, opinion. No, b back it up. To, you got to stop. It's time to get some help. You, you, we were doing good, and now we're taking it too far, Satan. We're taking it too far, dog. 
Take it Oxy's a couple Bay. steps back. Oxy's Bay is good. That's fine. That's fine. You just Hard slow it down a little bit. <laughs> you guess this God. relationship is going way too fast. Anyway, Satan bot. Uh, I really don't have an opinion about any of the changes due to not really being around a whole lot, but I'm interested in my little mind. Maybe Oxy can show me how not to mess up. It's not hard to not mother mess up. Motherload mine? I ain't, I ain't the guy anymore. <laughs> I'm banned for motherload mine. He's I can't on. go back. He's a former volcanic miner. <laughs> oh my God, can I add that tag? You can. Yes, I'm doing it. I'm adding the former volcanic miner <laughs> tag to myself. Getting rid of volcanic miner. No, I'm keep adding volcanic former miner VM on there. No, uh, former volcanic miner. That's what I'm talking about, <laughs> baby. Yeah. You can be a volcanic We've miner. We've evolved. And a former That's volcanic my- miner. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I think my goal in life is just to have as many Discord roles as possible, and it's not a competition, but it is. I think I have. You're mod. You're a server mod. You could add them all to your. I want them to make sense. Like I'm not going to add other people's team names to mine, but if it makes sense, it makes sense. Like I don't have all the the ones that you can add by yourself because I don't want to get added to go to God Wars. But all the ones that make sense. Anyway, <clears throat> Skylador says could be too drastic. L Oxy rant. 99% of players haven't done everything in the game. Why rush the progression? I don't remember what you ranted about, to be honest. It's been it's been far too long, but apparently you, you had an L take. <laughs> That's their controversial opinion, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> HP Healer says, I feel really good about them, and I agree with Michael, as the agility XP rate could be more across the board like it is uh, just out of 1.5 times. Um, the miscellaneous category had some good points as well. Go var and more rumors. Nice. I got I got so pissed off when they released that new blog. That's like, yeah, what people really need is more marks of grace. So we're actually going to nerf the proposed XP, so you only get seven hundred more. I think I sent something in the XP waste chat, and I was like, all right, at Michael, f- him, quadruple agility experience. This is the dumbest update poll I've ever seen. And then we bullied them so hard that they put it back to what it originally right. was how do you start because that nobody sentence. wants <laughs> nobody wants less xp in these shitty skills like a little bit of improvement to make right. it linear right i'm totally fine with but if you say what back. people need is marks that's that's a that's a controversial take right there you don't got your your hand on the pulse of the community no. if you think marks of grace is what people are lacking because i like, think they're just struggling with the rewards like marks of grace are not a good reward they're I, but i think people they voiced it very well that like we need to make agility worth training that's yeah. the problem like agility would be okay if there was a purpose there is not run energy does not last very longer run energy does not recharge fast enough there are not nearly as many perks to some of these things with with training it like run energy increase even it falls off at like 70 yeah and then you only get a little bit extra time from 70 to 99 like it's not worth it you know what they should do this would make agility like if they didn't change anything and they changed this i think i would i would give a i wouldn't be as mad they need to make marks of grace appear in your inventory not that you have to pick them up because if you're going to be giving us more marks of grace that just further complicates agility and the fact that i need to pay attention now to way too many things. I'm doing rooftops because I want to disassociate. I'm not doing rooftops because I want to look for a little yellow square or a little a, yellow, a little yellow circle on the ground. Give it to us in our inventory. I will say, when the boxes turn red, it does make me pay a little bit more attention. Not much, but a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Jordan says, you guys touched on it very briefly, but I'm not um, saying an outright ban is... I'm not saying to outright ban it obviously but adding more and more content to the game really does favor iron man uh sense of upgrading occurs more often i don't that's really hard to answer these questions or to like read these responses that's a controversial take i suppose (laughs) more content caters to iron men period like if the game improves iron men do better that is okay is that what they're saying because i I, I from what it. I understand, the, the point is like the more and more content we add, it caters to Iron Man because now they have more and more stuff to get. Hmm. Which like Yeah. <laughs> to everyone does, but you know. Q 
Key Koi Boy says they can eat my whole ass. <laughs> Sold. What are we doing? I don't know. Is that just the opinion? Is that where it stops? <laughs> God. That's what we got. Is that all there is for that response? That's what is they, they can got. eat my whole That's ass. That's the whole thing. <laughs> My DMs are open, Koi Boy. Don't you worry. And they uh and they flagged it. So I had to like go to a different section on the Spotify responses <laughs> and just like <laughs> publish it. <laughs> they, I don't are Spotify they flagged about it. Us? Are they talking about Jagex? Who knows? <laughs> good God. Uh Jumungo says, uh, new prayer is good. Power power creep not always good because best in slot items lasting long makes them iconic and something to strive for. Still though. Grandmaster quests need good rewards, and best in slot prayers could fill that. I agree. I don't care for best in slot items, so it's hard for me to be like, oh wow, I want to strive for a Tebo. So I don't know. I just have a weird view on this game right now. I'm, you will when you get there on your own. I know. That's what I'm saying. I have you a got weird, a weird. You uh, got a weird anti HLC PVM thing right yeah. now until you get up there on your Iron Man and you go. Oh damn! A Tivo really would make this better, wouldn't it? And then, and then suddenly, suddenly I'm there. Gonna, you're suddenly gonna recognize why yeah. why the best in slot matters. Yep. Uh, Fizzman fifteen. I hope I said that right. Oh my god, he got it right! Woo! Holy shit! <laughs> love the love they're giving skills and the prayers. Controversial take is uh, the god prayers should definitely have at least four and only be level seventy or higher. P.S. Still love you, Michael. Thank you, Fizzman. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't know what that means, just go back and watch that episode because that was the funniest moment of this entire podcast history is when I read his community question last two weeks ago. I'll remember that forever. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> Troy says, I'm devastated to agree with Oxy. I maxed already or I maxed ready to finally play the game to find that maxing is the game. Um, the focus should be engaging content instead of XP rates. Still prefer Michael as a person, of course. <laughs> I don't know who this is because they don't have their username. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That's fair. I think I would prefer Michael as a person, too. You know what? That's good on you. I uh, guess. I don't know how to follow that I one don't up. Know either. I don't know Troy well enough or not well enough to call him a rat, so I don't know. <laughs> who are you, know. Trey? Come out and say your name. Um, is it Trey or Troy? Trey. Who's, who is it? Trey D. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. That's just no idea. Their, their legal name, full legal name. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Curtin says, overall, I think the changes being made will be better for the game. My hot take is that tick manipulation methods shouldn't be considered as the max XP when we look at XP per hour methods at what the XP per hour methods should give. That is absolutely positively correct. And we just touched on that earlier. Oxy was saying that you know, your skill level in the game and how well you play the game should be considered when it comes to XP rates, not if you can break the game and, and utilize a bug, essentially, to, to, like, figure out how the game breaks. And it, like, there's a ton of different methods. If you're unfamiliar with what tick manipulation is, you basically break the game to allow yourself to get resources and XP faster than what should be possible by just playing the game and so you know, jagus is in a weird spot because right? they won't take that out but then they won't also like devalue it it's just kind of silly uh fizzle says good good fizzle says oh she put her whole name in there good fizzle says i think click intensive skills like agility um even though it's brain dead should have higher rates than less click intensive ones make already 120k an hour and nerf all bank standing skills hell yeah Blows my mind that you can get like three or four hundred K in XP per hour just doing crafting at a bank. But like we are punished for rooftops because they just are inherently slow. I don't want to get into it because we did a while ago. Um, old Bjorn John <laughs> Old Bjorn Johansson. I think I said that right. Old Old Bjorn Johansson. The mouthful. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with Michael about the Hall of Spoker. The effort is not even close to the reward in XP. The GC, the GP should not hold the XP back when the main reason is to do it for the XP. Two to, two to three times the XP, meaning 
he should think that they he thinks that they should two to three x the xp hell yeah i don't know you have you've done sepulcher way more than what you did in the last episode when we talked about this do you have any like summarizing thoughts of any does anything change as far as your opinion oxy of what of like so just to kind of summarize my point from two weeks ago Hald Sepulcher is extremely engaging content, and you're getting at sometimes 90k an hour. And then you have things like rooftops, which are about 60 to 70k. I think that is way too close. I think that Hall of Sepulcher should be like 150 to 200k, and I think that rooftops should be max at already like 100k an hour. I mean, I don't. I still don't agree with artificially doubling the XP just because. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong in Ardoyan that I'm getting 57k an that's hour. That's fine. And I I'm, think that's playing constantly that I'm not getting. Is it is picking up marks of grace really depleting my XP per hour that much? So. Um, I think you're getting. Because I'm you 135 get. laps in, and I'm. I don't know. Uh, I think. Frankly, I think it's fine where it is. I mean, I've yet to get 90k an hour at Hollow Sepulcher because, again, I can't consistently do floor five quickly. Um, I still stand by what I said that I think it's it's okay where it's at because agility is a slower skill. I think now the bigger problem that's facing us is when you really think about it, there's no point to agility. Yeah. Like, yeah, it helps your run energy, but it falls off significantly once you hit 50 agility, and then it falls off almost completely once you hit 70. And then that's 12 point something million XP with almost no benefit. Like, shortcuts are cool, sure. Um, but I feel like there'd be other ways. Like, you could implement all the quality of life shortcuts without agility in the game. If you took oh, agility absolutely. out of the game... You could take every single shortcut in this game and make it a quality of life thing for a diary reward or a quest completion without needing the agility skill period. I think the agility skill needs some serious rebalancing as far as run energy and run recharge rate and, I don't know, maybe make the agility cape make it so that you have unlimited run so you can wear the agility cape with any item in the game and just have unlimited run. I don't know. Um, that would be busted. I think. Because what does the agility cape even give you? Does it work as a graceful cape? Is that it? It gives you a stamina boost once per day. I think the equivalent of a stamina once per day, and it works as oh, the, the stamina grace- sip. Yeah, one stamina sip. <clears throat> and I think the cape. We're gonna one day. We're gonna have an episode where we go through all twenty three skill capes and we <laughs> figure out an actual good reward for them. Because holy shit, I think definitely having done more sepulcher like a lot in these last couple of weeks. Agility itself needs a point, but I think the the XP difference between Sepulcher and Artie, I think is still fine because I think it, it feels bad now because I'm shitty at the fifth floor. But once I'm as good as I am at the fifth floor as I am one through five or one through four, I'm still gonna think it's the it's. I still stand by that more clicking should mean more XP. I still stand by that we shouldn't artificially double skills even if they're miserable. Um, but I, I think if we're not going to double XP, agility needs a point, mm-hmm. you know? I think we should give it a point and double XP. But we have more, we have more answers to read. Um, there is a actual, like, there's a, a new uh, Project Rebalance blog where they're talking about elemental weaknesses. So maybe we'll get into that Dude, one in a few weeks. I, t- I, I, I glanced at that thing. I remember saying this seems cool and it just seems way more complex. Yeah, there's a whole beta like, world right now for it. Uh, dude, so. I don't know. I got to get on that beta world and try some shit out, man, because <laughs> like I listened to Spari and Bird talk about like the range differences and they made some points and I was like, "Oh yeah, the the light, medium and heavy range is kind of dumb. I don't like that." <laughs> so I've actually got to like read through and figure out what that blog means before I have a real opinion on it. Sure. But I've not been super excited to read through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot of words. But um, what else has a lot of words is the rest of these responses. Uh, on our YouTube, we asked you guys the same question. How do you feel about the recent blogs? And what is your most controversial take? Oxy's chair says, I'm indifferent regarding the blog, but unlike the guy that sits on me, I agree with Michael's take about agility being too slow. 
who I don't I have no idea in the world <laughs> change their name on to YouTube. Oxy's chair on YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube. That's some see now that that's a good name change right there. <laughs> that's a good name change. We're gonna we're gonna subscribe to this channel on the X <laughs> Discord. On the di- <laughs> They're just gonna get a Discord. They're just gonna get a notification for their YouTube that we subscribe to them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Filet de Fish says, uh, and this is a long one, so bear with me. A skill being historically slow doesn't justify changing a skill up a bit. Agility is a slow and grueling skill that is only done for graceful, the occasional shortcut, or one-time quest requirements. The Sepulchre is the best thing that has happened to agility but isn't fully unlocked until 92. Agility doesn't give as much uh, to the players like all the other slow skills do. At least mining gives ore for smithing, fishing gives cooking, farming gives herbs, runecrafting gives rooms, etc. Just because an update would make the skill faster doesn't mean it'll ruin the integrity of the game unless you double all the XP that I'm no longer on your side, Michael. I'm not saying double it, but I'm saying make it make sense. Oh, I'm asking you literally for. said double it. I did say double literally it. said double. Sure, okay, then you literally said double. It. That was the people pleaser in me. Fine, double it. I don't care if you're on my side. Uh, <laughs> Canister Shell says my biggest controversial take is that they could really go harder on the buffs to XP. Like, look at the top four slow skills to train: runecrafting, agility, mining, and fishing. You could double the XP rates for the methods people most use, and still doesn't even hit 100k an hour. Just feel like at the end of the day, if I'm actively playing the game, I shouldn't. I should be able to get over a hundred thousand k, a uh, hundred thousand uh, XP per hour in those skills. And one last hot take: every skill should have a Redwoods equivalent of super AFK fifty k an hour. Uh, for the record, I do some poker and I get good times. <laughs> Thank you for the for the resume there at the end. <laughs> so this guy knows what I he's talking about. Legitimately. Now, that's a take I will 100% agree with. We could give every skill a shooting star. We could give every skill a redwood log. I don't care what the XP rates are. We could give every single skill in the game. We could put a fucking treadmill in the middle of Lumbridge Castle for players to get 25k agility an hour, but you only have to click on it once every five minutes to turn the treadmill back on. That would be spectacular because it's uh, i don't like the mining skill i still stand by that being able to get a little bit done without having to pay attention to how miserable you are training the skill shooting stars far and away better content than motherload mine and it seems like calcified deposits are going to be better than both of those things are bet- so, better content or just easier content because it's easier. Better, I wouldn't say it's better content. Maybe. It's extremely, extremely boring. And it doesn't give you anything in the way of like really progressing your account. It's there for a recolor. I mean, it, it helps, but it gives you, but it still gives you a little bit of XP. And as someone it's, who's just gotten yes, done with that grind, every little bit ex- helps. And when you don't, when you don't feel like playing, like I don't feel like playing RuneScape at the moment. I want to play Helldivers and fight the new Adats. I want to play... I got a new farm on 1.6 in Stardew Valley. I've been itching to get back to that bitch. I'm on the last day of spring in my current playthrough, and I'm ready for summer because I know how to play Stardew now. Unlike my first time when I played years ago, I'm going to make some ducats, and we're going to finish the community center in year one without the guaranteed finish of the community center. But agility is not an afk skill. Agility is not a skill that I can click over right. and do right. like I could with stars, like I can with redwoods, like I can with fishing or whatever. Like I, if ever, That's a take I will, on my chest, every skill needs redwoods, every skill needs shooting stars, or something like that for players who want to play this game, but almost like in a more idle way. Yeah. That'd be perfect. Yeah, I agree. That, that, I don't think that would break the game in any way. Um I had a very different approach to agility because I I utilized my iPad for nearly like almost all of it. Like the only time I did agility on the computer was when we were recording and when I was editing. Any other time I was doing mm-hmm. agility, I was on my iPad. And I found that to be way more enjoyable getting half, not even half, like 
slightly less XP per hour than I would get at Spoker for way less effort. Like I could watch TV, I could watch a movie and just like look down every couple seconds and click a box and look back up. I think you just have a play style that doesn't really make like it doesn't blend well with not playing the game. And that's yeah, why I think you're I'm having still such a not, hard time. I'm still not a mobile gamer. Yeah. For as much as I've tried, I'm still not a mobile gamer. And I think the issue, like for me at work, like turning on my laptop feels like a big commitment because if I'm turning on my laptop, generally I have several hours without clients. And I, I've, like, but if I'm on my phone, I can't text anybody back. I can't watch TikTok. I'm just forced to stare at agility. Mm hmm. Even screen within screen YouTube only lasts for so long, you know? Like, I think maybe an iPad is the answer. I don't know. I've yet to find one at a reasonable price. We'll see someday, but I'm just still not a mobile gamer. I don't know. Currently, I've got it set up to where on my little iPad stand that I, you know, you know what I'm talking about, the thing that sits on my lap, mm -hmm. like, I could put my yeah. iPad, I can scoot it over a little bit, and I could put my phone on the, like, on my stand. So that I can be doing stuff on my iPad and then I can be scrolling through TikTok right next to it. So cozy, I think dude. Somebody posted in a different Discord, like a cold one tweeted something out about like the fucking Subway Surfer plugin. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a I think it's a I think it's a meme. I don't know if it's actually real, but like you know when you open the room light panel? You can get, yeah. like, get like subway surf on the other side. Oh my side gosh! While you're doing, I th I don't think it's real, but that's like, hilarious. <laughs> that'd be yeah. that'd be funny if they if they started adding like little content, like you could get TikTok on the on the side panel of Runelight. They click a button, it scrolls for you. We have to get back to these answers. Um, we do. <laughs> Bone owner says, uh, answering the community question and t and drawing some heat. Uh, perceived effort should always be tied to perceived reward. The effort of getting to level 90 agility needs to mean that you get a much better low effort method. I'm saying Michael and Oxy are both right. AFK RD rooftop should be 97k per hour and floor 5 so poker should be 270k an hour. That's kind of what I was saying earlier. On top of that, if a skilling method doesn't provide equal to equal XP to the effort it should provide valuable resources to balance it. No skill should feel like shit at any level, uh, at any level bracket. Um, anyone opposing this objectively, scientifically, and biblically married to uh, the crab mentality. I will bathe in their tears. Go ahead and at me. God damn. <laughs> We asked for controversy. He ain't take. messing around. I, I mean, shit, he uh, gave us one. I wouldn't call that controversial. That's kind of in line with how I was thinking because, like, I don't want to rehash the entire episode, but, like, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. I want it to make sense. Make it make sense. Um, and then finally, for our controversial takes, Mark says, release uh, own servers so people can play and change the game however they want to and release League's World for people that don't have the time to invest in the game. So private servers, everyone. That that doesn't ever go over well. I think that just like they just get toxic and, and they usually a private server is a, a way to like scam people out of money. It's never really intended to make people's game more enjoyable. It's either to to like put viruses on your computer or somehow scam people out of money because you have to pay for like a premium membership to even have access to the server. And that and that just like that's shitty. So if Jagex did it, it would be a different story. I don't know. But that's going to be it for the community question. Thank you so much to everyone who answered. If you want to answer this week's question, it'll be, what has been your favorite thing about Varlamore so far? We want to know. And we want to know things that maybe like aren't the mainstream thing. Like if you say Moon's Apparel, that's fine. But I want to know, do you love the fact that there's an herb patch? Is it really changing how you do farm runs? Because it might change the way I do farm runs. Who knows? Anyway, you can answer that question on it the... It may change the way I do farm runs. It's not changing anything. I don't do farm runs. I actually didn't do farm runs, so... You can answer that question on the community question section on Spotify or the pinned comment of this YouTube video. I'm going to throw it over to Oxy to talk forever, apparently, is what he said. Um, so... You guys... <laughs> buckle, it, buckle up. Strap on and strap on. Strap in and strap on. You can say it. I, I'm not going to take your, your glory. Brace yourselves. 
this is going to be a long ass achievement of the week. So as you guys have surely known, we have not done an achievement of the week in about three to four weeks. In that time, we have had a new continent release and everyone has gone fucking crazy with most of the categories. So we are going to kick. We have to do skilling first. It's too large to ignore. It's literally the elephant in the room. There's an entire half a page of just people <laughs> with skilling achievements. I think I counted like 34 individual players with 99s. Well. <laughs> Some of them with multiple. Like it's it's insane. So starting us off way back on like March 18th, I poop liquids achieve 99 herb lore. Trash pats also achieve 99 herb lore. Coincidentally, at the same time as Donut 308 achieved 99 strength in this it was like this two different lines right back to back they both got it and they weren't together they just sort of got them at the same time voltoro achieved 99 hp duo roto achieved 99 attack strength defense and range all within the same chat box which is pretty neat zammy's wine achieved 99 range bob dole achieved 99 fletching Suffix has gone mad this week and achieved 99 agility, hunter, fishing, and smithing. Not this week, this month. Whatever it is, he's schmoving. Road to he's max. close to max. Infamous Boy achieved 99 defense. 819 achieved 99 smithing and 99 woodcutting. I want to say Jay Goose takes the cake for the most 99s in the last in the last couple of weeks i kept looking through the channel and i was like dog you gotta chill dog you gotta chill dog dog you gotta chill <laughs> he's 15 out of 23 and in since march 17th he has completed 99 farming 99 mining 99 strength 99 crafting 99 slayer 99 attack and 99 range damn Jay Goose has gone insane. Oh that's gosh. what? 799s? I think that's a record. Is 799s um, in one achievement of the week. That's nutty. Corpse Fiance has achieved 99 Fletching. Smeo? Shmeo? I don't know how to say your name. Smeo? I don't know. You achieved 99 Cooking. You know who you are. <laughs> Rip Riley achieved 99 Hit Points. Shields achieved 99 Cooking. Evil on Olive, good old Leaf Haggard, achieved 99 fishing. Submediant, my boy, achieved 99 cooking. Habitat, achieved 99 fishing. Radiant, achieved 99 farming. Zader, or also X, achieved 99 herblore. Achilles, achieved 99 farming and 99 range. Antics, a name we've not seen in a while, good old Antixon, achieved 99 attack by accident during a clue scroll, which was fun. <laughs> Billy H, achieved 99 range. Elvish J will also cruise into Max, achieve 99 smithing. Burn Up, achieve 99 hunter while doing contracts. Literally straight through. Started with like 90 something, just went right to 99 when hunter pretty contracts. Pretty sure Suffix did that too. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Shinkiro went from the worst skill in the game to one of the fastest skills in the game and got 99 cooking. Thick Hawk achieved 99 slayer. Probiscus, aka July, uh, somebody else posted about him it was like a nice little paragraph how he got 99 crafting it was fun mm -hmm. silky achieved 99 slayer kaiga sales also cruising to max got 99 cooking lemonhead 789 achieved 99 cooking false doggo achieved 99 range and tank neek just now during the episode achieved 99 fletching oh that's a lot of goddamn 99s that's a lot of them we have some total level things as well. Moisty Legs achieved 2k total level. Dilly Gaff achieved 2200. Hypa Flare achieved 2200. Fumble Swing achieved 2200. And Ryukasen achieved 2200. There's only one thing we saved till the very end in the skilling category. And that happened today, just before we started recording. De La Hente, otherwise known as Angel from the Dorks and Daggers podcast, if you guys remember that, tweeted, not he didn't tweet, he was in the CC and he said, hey guys, how much does an XP tome give? And people were like, 1.5 times your level. So if you have, you know, 90 agility, you'll get 130 or something, 140, whatever that math is, uh, 1400, 1300 or 1400 agility XP. And he's like, oh, cool. 
and then without just like bam instantly popped 2277 right there what? in lumbridge castle so he, he just was, was like how much is an xp tome okay cool and de la gente maxed uh in the most casual way possible he posted the picture there's nobody there with him he's just like all right sick I feel like that's classic he just de la knocked gente, it though. out right there that is awesome. Oh. So, Ben, congratulations, man. Huge. You've maxed it. You're one of the, the most prominent wow. skillers in the clan. Now you get the cape to show for it. You can finally play the game. Very, very proud I of you. I remember when he started, and it was like 2K total within a month or something crazy. It, not he, that. Is he, yeah. We're like, what are you doing? He's like, I got to beat Chuck. Got to beat Chuck. <laughs> and now he did. That anyway, was like, this whole thing. Now he's maxed. Crazy, dude. His progression. I, it feels like it was yesterday where he started. It probably was two years ago, but I've never seen. I mean, yeah, he was on my. So I want to say he was on my King of the Hill bingo team. So <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he was. He he's come quite a long ways. It's awesome to see. Congratulations. Um, yeah, truly, congratulations. We have some miscellaneous things as well in the miscellaneous category. We have four brand new quest capes. We have fear fearnen firenen firenen. I think I'm saying that right. Fight firenen firenen. Uh. <laughs> Eighth Try, Mr. Curtains, and Fish Bun all got their quest capes these past couple of weeks. Shout out to you guys. It's a nice looking cape. Additionally, Nuke Moose got his diary cape, and Planker got his music cape. So we got some people getting some capes here and there. I want to say Shinkiro also got his diary cape, and I forgot to shout him out for it, and he DM'd me, giving me shit about it. So <laughs> I think Shinkiro also got his diary cape. I have to go back and look at our DMs from all those weeks ago, but shout out to you, Shinkiro. Um, it's combat time holy shit you guys have been on a killing spree these last <laughs> couple of weeks we have six brand new fire capes steel beams i'm gonna butcher this name and i knew as soon as i typed it i wasn't gonna get it right oh, no ogi e ye ye three <laughs> og og ye ye i o g g i e y i e y three oh. I don't know how to say your name out loud, dog. Congratulations on your fire cape. We also have Pistachio Paladin, which is a bitchin' name. Man, Bear, Pig, Auric, and Terrify. Terrify, you lucked out. You posted your fire cape in Awesome Drops. And I went to Awesome Drops because I was in VC right before we recorded. And someone said, who tagged me? And it was Immortal who said who tagged me. I thought, oh, someone got the Ulm pet and they added him in TNL. Uh... And I went over and I saw your fire cape right before we started recording. So congratulations. We'll, we'll talk about levels and achievements here in a little bit. So congratulations to our first fire capes here in the clan. We have some more firsts as well. Mr. Fenny, uh, Abyss Frankie, and IV Davy, or Ford Davy. I'm not sure. You all killed Zalra for the first time. Big Kyle, who has been uh, pretty active in the CC today, I've seen him quite a bit uh, while we were recording, got his first Gauntlet KC. And Narzan and KCT got their first Corrupted Gauntlet KCs. We have some Combat Diaries. We have the Combat Achievements section of the Combat Achievements section. <laughs> um, P5HT uh, uh, completed the Hard Diaries. As did Chef Boy Red complete the hard combat achievements. Uh, and then Step Iron completed the uh, elite combat achievements. I'm glad Step Iron is stuck around. He was one of those, join the Discord at the last minute, DM me at 9 o'clock at night. Hey, can I get into Fall Bingo? Yeah. I'm glad he stuck around and hung out. Um, he did get into Bingo, by the way. <laughs> we have some kits. We have some things that look even fancier now. Infamous Boy, C Minor 7, and Busco Beep all got their Missouri kits. So they got some shnazzy, shnazzy backpacks. Additionally, Scotty and Knee Master 12, if you don't know, he is Knee Master 12, <laughs> got their fang kits this week. So they got the, the sick ass looking fangs. That's a 500 uh, invo, I'm right? sure they, yeah, I'm sure they both yeah. also got the, the Menifite ornament kit for the ward, but. They got the fang, and that's it looks real nice. And normally, we don't ever see this. In these last three weeks, we got three of them. Jaharis, Ibu, and Gay Raccoon, Bi Raccoon, Mr. Raccoon. They all got Blood Torva this week. Oh. And they've spent an egregious amount of money on this. Like, it took hundreds of orbs. I think Ibu is like 330 orbs total. 
I want to say raccoons was up in the 300s as well. Like a lot of orbs, but they did it and they got blood Torva and it looks fucking sick. I don't even think Jaharis has full Torva, <laughs> but he's got blood Torva. Um, and it looks awesome. Normally, normally we shout these out last, but we have a new item that we have to shout out mm. last just this one time. So for the only time likely in achievement of the week, will this achievement play second fiddle this week? Bowmanator, Chaos Cleric, and as of last night, Korgster have all received their infernal capes. Three, three regulars in the TNL community all got their infernal capes and god damn i know it feels good i know i clowned on chaos cleric in the in the episode with mod rice and he had a fire cape when we recorded and then i think the day of or the day before it came out uh he got his infernal cape <laughs> i remember being like oh damn <laughs> my comment's not <laughs> gonna age well um <laughs> But I, I've been watching these guys go for it, and the, congratulations. I know how good it feels to finally have your Infernal Cape. So the same praise I give to people when the Infernal Cape is last in Achievement of the Week, congratulations. You literally now can play the game. You can do whatever you want. You will never have the pressure of having to get an Infernal Cape again. This week, however, there has been a new kind of pressure applied because within the last couple of weeks, a new best in slot backpack was released with the Fortis Coliseum. Dinzana's Quiver has come into the game. And here in TNL, in the XP Waste Discord, Fred Ocelot, Ayub, a, like a, a, an incredible speedrunner we know, Ayub, what are you doing, Stepmom, Immortal, Mech NG, Troll, Hippo, Tank Neek, and of course, unsurprisingly, on both of his accounts, the Tuzkal himself, Too Fast Kills, have achieved Dinzana's Quiver. Congratulations on being some of the first in TNL to receive your quivers and, and you know face Saul, and he's going to break your back and look at those toes or whatever he shouts out in, in the thing. You beat him. You have the new item. Insanely proud of you guys. I think Planker also got one, but I don't think Planker put it out. he did because he didn't post it in levels and achievements but he put it in for the speed run time. oh hell yeah <laughs> so i think plankers also got a quiver um shout out to you guys uh for for getting that done um that's an insane achievement uh to get it so close after release you know if you guys are still working on it you'll get it you'll get there if you got it and didn't post about it i'm sorry i didn't shout you out i'll shout you out next week um hopefully you guys get it next week if you haven't uh it's coming gotta post about it it's coming. <laughs> fear, fear. fear says something. <laughs> so Herod, it says, I'll twist your dick off. <laughs> I wish what? that was real. That would be fantastic. I'll put it on screen right now. But man, I wish that was actually in this game. But that does it for an absolutely massive achievement. That's a lot of, the of week. achievements, guys. I know. I know it's been a couple of weeks, and I'm sorry if you guys have been waiting for it, but we finally got it. You guys are you guys are in. Um, we were able to shout everything out. So, congratulations to all of you guys. Whether it's something small like you completed a handful of easy quests, or you got base seventies or base sixties or whatever, or if you got Blorva or your Infernal Cape or your Quiver, or if you did all three in the same week doesn't matter we're insanely proud of you guys for all the stuff that you do, that you achieve in this game if you want to showcase what you achieve head over to discord.gg forward slash osrstnl and post in the levels and achievements chat for you terrify levels and achievements chat i know it's an awesome drop and we're proud of you for the fire cape but if it's not in levels and achievements i'm probably not gonna see it which means it won't get shouted out and it feels bad when i don't shout people out who do things right, right? Because I don't want to be exclusionary when people have the achievements that we shout out because my dumbass missed them. But <laughs> congratulations to everyone. Come hang out in the best RuneScape Discord. We say it all the time. People are still bumping right now. For some reason, the Church of Bear is at the Corporeal Beast. Oh, fun. Which doesn't seem right. Um, by the way, if you're looking for a new religion, the Church of Bear is always accepting new members. Um, recently, for the last couple of weeks, 
We hit, <laughs> Soggy says it's a mission trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mission trip to corporeal beast. <laughs> we have sacrilegious <laughs> side. We have had a a growing number of members oh, in the clan uh, do free for all Callisto mass, and I have myself have not really been a part of it. Uh, but from what I've been told, <clears throat> people are having a blast with it, and it's it's helping people overcome their fear of the wilderness. Yeah, absolutely, um, which is great. Um, people are killing the bosses they're getting killed by pkers they're coming back with some loot we've seen some void waker blades we've seen um a couple of pets we've seen some pickaxes so proud of you guys who are out there you know representing tnl and the church of bear uh but come kill bear if you want to we don't care um yeah that's gonna wrap it up for achievement of the week so i'm gonna send it over to michael for What's going to take this episode home, baby? It's a surprisingly long episode for us, not really having yeah. a point. We're still pushing the two and a half hour mark. So, Michael, my friend, do you have a fun question for us? I do. I do. With the, uh, the amount of weeks that we've taken off from doing these fun questions, you know, we kind of have a backlog now, so it's kind of nice. We could pull from our document. That's always an option. But we do have some um, community-submitted fun questions, and I'll read them here. So, L.M. Hyrua. Um, they're a gnome child patron. They said, inspired sailing fun question. So you've just sold your Karamjan rum to Zambo to fund the purchase of your first ship, but you need a crew of five to help. My question is, what five bosses are, your, are you hiring for your crew and why? It's the addition of the why that always throws me. Because I can throw 10, I can throw you five NPCs. But I don't know why. So, um, uh, this is hard. I I always think of the same like four NPCs or three NPCs. I gotta put the boy, you know, my boy, the wise old man. He's got to be on my crew. He's. In, I thought it was bosses. It says, it was bosses. Oh, is this bosses? It's even, well, that's even worse for Michael. Harder. As if it's bosses. It's so much harder. It's gonna be great. How big is your ship? Uh, <laughs> that's my question. It's it, it's it doesn't matter how big <laughs> it is. It's large. Special shout out to Xfinity who just got ninety nine magic while we were recording. Oh wow! Uh, who nice. got it just after achievement of the week? Um, but we'll we'll include you next week, Xfinity. So <laughs> if you post it, um, five bosses. That's a lot of bosses to fit on a ship. And what is a boss if not just a monster? So maybe I can do. No. So, okay, I'm going to let Michael cook and actually try to figure out what a boss is before he says, I think I'm going to put a water fiend on there because Slayer is PVM after all. I'm going to save Michael and you're gonna, we're going we're gonna to let you cook here for a little bit. That's right, I'm taking shots. You're not free from this. I'm taking shots. Um, first things first, I got to put Temporos as a boss. Like, There's no way you go sailing without the fishing boss. Uh, right? There you go. If for no other reason than to just like help the crew get food. It could also help like wave off storms and things like that. Um, next, I'm going to put Criara because Criara is going to be my scout, literally my eye in the sky. Fly ahead. Are we nearby land? You know, how are we looking? <clears throat> Criara is going to come out and help us and help us scout ahead, which is going to be hype. Um, who else? Who else are we going to have on there? Um, it would be a major deterrent for other enemy ships kind of like davy jones if i could just call leviathan whenever i felt like because i've been recently i watched pirates of the caribbean 2 pretty recently i've been listening to some of the soundtrack and i've been seeing some of the stuff on youtube of just how good of movies those are and the idea of leviathan as like a kraken for me where uh leviathan is part of my crew but just like does his own thing until the time comes where leviathan needs to show up and f the shit out of somebody in the water like that'd be a good one for number three um let me see who else who else is up there uh i feel like it would be nice to have Huntliff for no other reason than just like he seems like a good boy you know it might be <laughs> nice to have like a like a deckhand who's also a dog. That'd be cool. And then I'm going to get the Mimic. The Mimic is going to be on my ship because on the off chance we get boarded, on the off chance somebody shows up and tries to get in my ship and plunder my booty, <laughs> nothing would make me happier than a couple of ragtag pirates 
try to get on board my ship while we're not paying attention or if we're in a scuffle and they just get fucking bitten in half by the mimic that's sitting in my treasure room as captain of the ship. That would be fantastic. Nate Dog just posted a gif of what looks like help me step bro, I'm stuck in the mimic <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm what I'm anticipating. Um so yeah, we're going to get Temporos, Criara, Leviathan, Hunlith and Mimic. Those are my five bosses. Solid. And that's why they're on my on my ship as well. Solid. Solid. I'm going to go with a couple of the same ones. The Leviathan is my number one. Um, not necessarily on the ship, but the crew can be in the water and still, you know, still be part of part of the crew. So protection. Part of the crew, part of the ship. Yes. Um, maybe we'll modify the ship to give it a little, a little sleeping area under the water or something. Or maybe the Leviathan can just come out of the water. Who knows? Would it be a sea? Would it be an adventure at sea without Kraken? I don't know. If we have Leviathan and the Kraken, nobody is bothering us. Because if, if we're on the open seas, you know, you have to worry about pirates and you have to worry about, you know, sea monsters. And if I have Leviathan and if I have Kraken, I am safe. So we've got security covered. Now we need some tall boys. I want Vedion and I want Soul on my crew. We're breaking out the tall boys, baby. <laughs> We're getting Swifty on board the ship. <laughs> I need some. I need some crew with height because if I know one thing, there's a lot of climbing going on when you have to sail a ship. So we need Soul and we need Vedion, and then I think uh, an all for one deal because it's just how that works. I'm getting all six Barrows Brothers for the price of one. They are one person on my crew. So I have all six Barrows brothers. And I still No, that's all that's five. Okay. So as my fifth pick, all six Barrows brothers. Uh that's my crew. It's gonna be efficient. We're definitely going to be uh safe and we're gonna get places. And um I don't know, the Barrows brothers seemed like a good time. Like they were just trying to help help a cause and they somehow got swindled into limitless power, which corrupted them. Uh, and they were they sold were their losing. souls. They needed they needed something. They were losing. Yeah. They were losing the battle across the south, and they took their last ditch effort, which was what what they thought was going to be the winning secret to to defeating their enemies in the name of Steradolmen. But it turned out to be a curse in service to Zaros and Sliske, because they became immortal. Um, and they couldn't die in the battle, but they I'm pretty sure they shortly they died shortly after, but could not ever rest because now they are servants of of the empty lord, as it were. Mm. Free my boy Guffin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you. Uh, let me see what your name is one more time. Hiram Hira uh, L M Hira. Uh, it's really I'm butchering that, so I apologize. But thank you for the fun question. If you guys want to send us a fun question, you know the ways. Um, I do need to go check the PO box. And, and I, we can't do a fun question section without mentioning the postcard that we got from Swole that I completely forgot about till this again, very moment. You forgot it again. Yeah. We're doing a second fun question. A what second fun question. What do you got for me? So this is the postcard from Swole. He says, this is the largest rock in Australia. And if you look hmm. up there, there happens to be a mole killer on top of that rock. In Australia, so oh. what a man! I, I, what the, the one thing I will say is the heights are not accurate for Michael and I. It should be switched. It should be switched. <laughs> but yeah, it is intentional. Anyway, uh, Swole says, "G'day, gents. Long time no see. It's your boy Swole, Verzix, big Swole Aussie boy. I have a fun question mm. for you. You've been shipped off to Australia to live out your life in the wilderness here. Based off of what you know about Australia." You can only bring one main hand weapon, one spec weapon, and five other weapons to help you survive. What are they, and how long do you plan on doing so? And how do you plan on doing so? All the love and support this year. Love, Swole, and Vers, XOXOXO. You get one man. Bring a gun. One weapon <laughs> and one spec <laughs> weapon. One main hand, one spec, and then five Can other I bring items. Two guns. Can I bring two? <laughs> uh, do they have to be RuneScape items? I imagine so. I think right? that's the point. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, that 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 makes the most sense. The I mean, point. I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a, a crossbow. I have to take a crossbow if I'm going to Australia. Okay. I don't want to get close to anything. Even the like docile shit can still kill you over there. Yeah. Like I I don't want to get close to any I don't care. I'll shoot a spider. <laughs> I'll waste a couple bolts on that bitch. I don't care. Um Are you gonna make your own bolts? I'll uh it comes preloaded with all the bolts I'll ever need, clearly. Okay, um, cool, cool, cool. And for a spec weapon, oh boy. It might honestly be smart. If I'm sur- if I'm trying to survive out in the wilderness, it might be smart to to take like do we think a yellow karis would work? Yeah. In the wilderness. Ouch. <laughs> then I'll take a yellow karis cuz I'm going to inevitably get killed by something <laughs> over there and the yellow karis could could help me back on my feet there you go um items though does runescape have sunscreen in it i don't think no, so. it doesn't australia gets so comically hot in some of the areas that it's it's like 40 degrees celsius which to like us who use freedom units that is that's absurd that's like 120 like 110, degrees. 120 yeah it's bad what is okay what is 40 i gotta look this up 40 C to F. That's 104. What is 50 C to F? There's no way. It gets yeah, that's 122. 50. Any Australians weigh in? Does it get to hottest 50? Hottest temp in Australia. Well, if you're looking at the hottest temp in the United States, there's parts of 50. California. 50.7. There's parts of California. 50.7 back in 1960. That reach 130 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the average temperature in the summer in Australia? It's probably like 45. It's still hot though. I mean, it, we're, we're talking like the desert though. Like we're not talking like yeah, Death Valley gets really hot. Los Angeles does not get 130 degrees. Like there's no way. It gets to Los 40 Angeles degrees. Gets to be 130 like degrees. 40 degrees Celsius is your average day in the summer in Texas. Just keep that in mind. I'm, okay, I'm just saying you ain't living in the comfort of your AC home in in, in like you are in Texas. You're in the upside down wilderness. I'm bringing sunscreen if I can, because I'm going to die. But if we're talking (laughs) RuneScape items, I probably have to bring an axe. I'll probably bring a tinderbox. Um, What else will I bring? Um, I'm going to (sighs) bring... What are the chances that I can bring, like... Purple sweets would melt, surely, right? Yeah. I'm trying to think of like stackable food. Hmm. Karambanji? I can't. Can you cook karambanji though? I, it's fish. I'm sure you could eat it. I don't know if I want to bring food because I don't know if I want anything to like come after me. I'll take, um, I'll take like a hunter kit, like one of those lunar <laughs> yeah. like hunter kits. Yeah. I'll I'll take one of those. Um, That's four. Another item. That's three. That's three. Uh, axe, tinderbox, hunter kit, and then maybe I will take. Like, I don't want to say like a knife. Like that's so easy. It's like, <laughs> obviously, yeah, I'd take a knife. But like, what other like wacky RuneScape thing could I bring? Hmm. Um, I would. Uh, ooh, I would take an agility cape so that I could get my one stamina dose away oh. to run away from whatever monstrosity is is chasing Love that. me. Um, <clears throat> and then I would bring. Is it totally unfair to say I would bring a rune pouch with runes for humidify? That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, give me a rune pouch with runes for humidify oh, and vengeance yeah. so, I don't, so I don't dehydrate, but if something bites me, they're going to know gonna not die. to. Like, I, I want to be just as toxic as the creatures in Australia, <laughs> where if I'm getting chased by like a, a huntsman spider or, um, or a snake, or I got a really pissed off kangaroo hunting me down, I'm going to cast venge. And if the skull above my head doesn't scare them, they're going to take a good portion of the damn. Like, you break my ribs, I break yours, bitch. Like, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, that's what I'm taking. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. I, I would take for my first weapon, main hand weapon would be a corrupted Bofa. Because I don't want to have to worry about carrying heavy ammunition. So, or... Good point. I would say a crystal bow, but like, I think the corrupted Bofa is probably better. Even without crystal surely, armor surely better i can still just fend my, for myself um and then my spec weapon is going to be an sgs because like yours 
it has the ability to heal me and restore whatever faith I have in living, aka prayer. And then my five items are going to be similar. I would take um, an axe and a tinderbox so I can at least make fire. I would take, uh, I was thinking like just bringing a bird snare, not taking the whole, the whole hunter kit, but the hunter kit seems like a pretty decent option. Um, and then I'm also going to take a rune pouch. But for me, I'm, instead of vengeance, because like scaring them off is an option, I'm taking humidify and cure me. Because if I know one thing, oh, that's a good there's one. There's bound to be some sort of poisonous something. So I'm not getting venomed or poisoned in any aspect. I'm bringing cure me. And there's a bunch of like just the whole lunar spellbook in general is like a really good spellbook to survive off of. Um, so if I could bring some way to craft runes i don't know if i'll ever run out of runes like it only holds fifteen thousand or sixteen thousand of each sixteen thousand of each yeah so that would be a rune pouch just stocked with runes everything i would need and then what's my last item something goofy hmm maybe like maybe like a uh an herb sack or something so that if i do find plants that i can eat or use for medicine if i'm if i'm in the wild and sur- trying to survive i have a way to store them um ooh nate dog in the recording booth says the circlet of water and that's an that's option huge. that'd be a big one um that's an option so michael just got the your dad's here bitch wrap yo, it up look what, from his wife no so. look what she just made me this is lunch what a hard boiled eggs over toast what a woman. Thank you. Tell her I said thank you. Oxy she said thank you. She's not even for me, <laughs> but like, damn, dude, that's nice. And a glass of kombucha. <laughs> Hell yeah. What a woman. Well, let's wrap this up, Oxy, because that's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Michael's got to eat. Michael's dad's coming over. We're going to we're gonna wrap this one up. Thank you for the fun question, you thank guys. You, swole. Thank you for the postcard, Swole. Um, yeah. It's been a good one. For, for uh, We don't really care. We're just vibing. It's been a good vibe episode. Um, yeah. Join us next week, or we're going to talk about something. Who knows? Ooh. One of these days, we're going to do a skill cape episode. That and we're going to so rip apart the dog shit skill cape rewards. Hell yeah. We're going to do something eventually, but we're not sure what that is just yet. Um, until then, though, enjoy Varlamore. Uh, if you're going to RuneFest, post about it in the XP Waste chat, and we can discuss what we're all doing. Uh, we got months to plan. So, folks, it's been real. It's been fun. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.